before I pressed that button I thought I had everything sorted out it was all figured out and I was wrong hi everybody welcome back um, apologies that yesterday again we had some technical problems um, <clears throat> the issues are twofold and we have solutions um, first of all part of the problem is um, the game's just inherently unstable but after I went offline yesterday because of the, the hard crash um, Codemasters released a 1.04 patch and that was very good news because it seemed to fix my game without me having to reinstall it <clears throat> we may still have technical issues though if at any point the stream goes down again um, I will do what I can to get it back up either with this game or something else because I feel like hanging out tonight secondly as I take a tasty sip of my refreshing beverage um, the other issue is uh, the PlayStation uh, hopefully my mic is good enough that you're not picking it up but it sounds like it's going to take off it's been very hot here recently and it seems my PlayStation is not getting enough air circulation and it overheats so I will have to take a break probably at the two hour mark um, and then switch it off for five minutes, have it cool and then put it back on. We're going to fix that by moving over to a capture card. Um, my plan for that is towards the end of the month, start of next month. So instead of streaming this way, we'll have a proper Twitch set up with graphics and a webcam and all that stuff. I've got all the technology except the capture card which is coming soon, it just all needs to be plugged in and figured out and made awesome um, I'm going to drive some practice because um, I know some people who are dropping in later are working and I don't want to do a Schumacher debut without them so we'll go unlock some development points <laughs> hello mate yeah I'm sorry I was I've been itching to go because uh, yeah, after yesterday's uh, technical problems, which fixed themselves, I was, as I was just saying. Codemasters put out a patch that fixed the game without me having to restart it, but um, <clears throat> they only did that after it had already ruined my stream for the evening. So uh, between that and my PlayStation overheating, uh, we were up against it. And it might be that we have trouble again tonight or I have to take a break at some point, but my plan is to be online most of the night. And... I have a capture card coming and the plan is later this month or next month to move over to a new streaming setup so it doesn't put as much strain on the PlayStation and everything looks better so we don't have, just have to deal with this standard PlayStation layout. Yeah exactly, so it's just doing real start again. Um, that actually happened to Williams again in practice today. Oh look it's Mick Schumacher. Um, because I felt bad for Beetlejuice being left out and because practice one is in the rain um, I'm actually going to drive probably the only practice session I'm going to do on the stream because um, I'm doing all my practices on my offline playthrough um, where I'm not boring anyone um, yeah let's just dive straight into it there's um, a chance here for me to practice more in the full wet and uh, get myself ready for the new season of the podcast which starts uh, a week tomorrow and I'm very excited about it um, hopefully I may even have the new setup ready by then but I'm not promising um, but we are putting a lot more effort now into being a bit more professional we've had some paid advertising going on and um, we have a reddit now and a discord and all that good stuff and all that's going to be shared in the, the future at some point <clears throat> But we will see. How was your day, mate? Did you have a good one? I spilled coffee on my balls in a video meeting. So that's how mine went. And because it was like a professional meeting, I had to sort of style it out with like a, a serious face. And then when so people were saying, hey, did you just spill hot coffee, coffee onto your genitals? I just, just go, what's coffee mate? Never heard of it. That's good, that's good. Um, 
I, I kind of feel guilty that I'm, I'm working, to be honest, because so many people I know have been laid off. Um, and I've just carried on working as normal, just from home. I don't even have to put pants on. And I even got a pay rise. Um, so I feel really guilty when I talk to people who are having a hard time. I just don't tell them what's going on for me. So, we'd like to run the acclimatization program if you have a chance before qualifying. Acclimatization in the wet is never fun. Particularly on the slow corners and in this car. And after practice, I have to back out because we have to put on our special Silverstone livery for quality in the race. I think it has to be done. Oh, and that's awesome that you work in renewable energy. To be honest with you, I, at one point in my life, I planned to go the same way. <clears throat> there was uh, an engineering degree at a university just outside the city that um, specialised in renewable, um, renewable technology, and I really considered going. Um, but in the end, I opted uh, for mechanical engineering at a different place. So um, it wasn't to be. But I think if I could go back, I would. I would do it differently. Oh, I don't know, man. I'm. I'm never underestimate how lazy I've become at <laughs> this phase in my life. I, I, you know, I figured I should have been born like 30 years before I was, because back in the day, you know, you learned a profession and then that was just, that was just what you did and it was fine. But now I'm having to learn a new programming language every, every six months it feels like and the world's changing around me and I'm becoming angry and confused and I just want to do my job and get paid. I don't want to be constantly learning. I don't know how I'm going to do it in like my 50s. And like, the other thing I, I, I think of is um, imagine if you sort of cut your teeth specialising um, really, really hardcore into sort of like hybrid technology and, and that's had a super short lifespan. Um, so those people have to shift Fantastic. over to some to other discipline, I suppose. That's my excited to see where Schumacher's going to end up dance. Um, I don't expect him... Oh, wow, we're way off the pace of Alexander Albon. But I have cranked the difficulty again. Uh, he's not even out on track yet. I'm really hoping that the patch that's due tomorrow contains the new McLaren livery because the rumour is that it might um, the rumour is that it might um, no, to be honest mate, no I, I, when, even when I got here I didn't plan to stay uh, I didn't plan to stay and then stupid life just sort of <laughs> makes a decision for you <laughs> It's funny that, isn't it? How things work out. Actually, a, a really good friend of mine was in the same position and they got really fed up uh, with, with Berlin because it's a very transient city. Yeah, it's got a great atmosphere, but I've never loved it the way a lot of my colleagues love it and people around me. But it's a transient city. So in the time I've been here, like, None of my friends today were friends that I made in my first year here. Because people tend to, to be here for a few years while they figure out what they want to do with their lives. And then they go somewhere where the wages are higher. Because there's a lot of tech startups here, but they all pay below the average for Germany, let alone Europe. Um, so, like I know a lot of my colleagues <clears throat> started with my company here in Berlin. And now they're in Dublin, most of them, working for Google or Facebook. Um, or uh, they're in Munich or Frankfurt, Stuttgart. 
where they pay real wages. Berlin's um, Berlin was very, very cheap, and it's a good place to start your career when I got here. As it stands now, it's still a good place to start your career, but it's not cheap anymore, um, and your wages just don't stretch as far. So a lot of people have been kind of forced out. Um, <clears throat> but I was talking to a friend earlier, and um, she left Berlin because she had enough of it and went to Hamburg chasing a better life, but um, it's, a, it's a proper corporate culture. That, that's one of the advantages of staying in Berlin. It's really informal. There's no dress codes at any of the businesses. It's all flat hierarchies and re it's super informal. Um, and then, you know, whenever I deal with partners in Munich or Frankfurt, you have to, you know, get a suit, get a tie, you have to button it up, be all rigid. Um, well, I mean, to be honest, I, I melt in good weather. I'm really badly adapted to heat and I, I've still never got used to the summers here. I mean, uh, it, it's genuinely no exaggeration that for the first 15 years of my life, I didn't know what 30 degrees felt like because my little corner of Great Britain um, was right on the coast in the north. And um, even though Britain does get temperatures over 30, my area never did. Um, like the hottest day ever in my childhood that I remember was like 27 and we were all melting. Um, and so coming here where, you know, one summer it was 39 for a week. I mean, I just couldn't handle it. It, it was inhuman. Um, and then occasionally, like continental weather is a bit more extreme than on the island. Like we're pretty pretty cold and rainy all the time and in the north you'll get snow but um, the winters are colder here and the summers are hotter here and um, I the winters I can manage the summers I I really can't tolerate and I have you know again colleagues who are working down in Munich now and they'll text me and say it's 42 today and I said, oh, you can fucking keep that my friend <laughs> knock yourself out you can have that See if I can do any tire control at all in the wet. Because the problem is, even at low, uh, low speed, the car will just instinctively slide. Bad for the old tires. We had a cracking thunderstorm as well earlier, which we've been waiting for for ages, but it's still hot. Yeah, that part of the world, dude. No chance. I mean, that's the only reservation I have about uh, the Singapore Grand Prix. I don't know if it's a, if it's true or if it's one of these things that um, the internet makes up, but um, I was reading a piece somewhere online, like one of these clickbait articles, saying that in Singapore <clears throat> it's so hot all the time that everyone lives indoors. You don't really go outside, so there's like skyways connecting buildings, um, so you don't have to go outside. It's all air conditioned. Um, but yeah, seeing like the, the humidity and the temperatures in places like Singapore, um, yeah, no thank you. And uh, briefly I worked for a company <clears throat> who had an office there and they have this program where you can elect to work a few months in one of the satellite offices, you know, and there's like one in Brazil, one in New York and, and so on. And Singapore was just, no, I can't do it. <laughs> I guess you need to, right? I guess I guess they just have to have that. But yeah, other than complaining about the heat and having a bit of a thunderstorm which hasn't helped the temperature at all, um, I bet everything in that shopping mall costs a million pounds because of the air conditioning. <laughs> My office building won't like, nowhere in, in Berlin has air conditioning, unless it's really, really fancy. Um, and uh, in, in my company, the first office we had, had air conditioning, but the management would lie to us that it was broken, and tell us, don't, check, don't attempt to put it on, it's broken and you'll, you'll cause damage, when really they just didn't want to pay for the bill. <laughs> um, 
bastards, right? Um, aside from that, I watched a little bit of um, FP2, just enough to see uh, Danny Rick testing the 2022 um, spec rear wing. So they're already testing parts for two years out. Um, but it can't have worked very well because he had a horrible accident and he was limping when he got out of the car. Um, hopefully he's all right, but um, I do wonder if perhaps he's um, fit to start the weekend. I missed FP1, but I saw that uh, Latifi had a gearbox issue. Was there anything else particularly fun going on? It was nice to see Jack Aitken in the car. I enjoyed that. Right, qualifying in the wet. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, that, I like that, I like that. And I think they should think about that more often because I think they take it for granted too frequently that quality is just going to be fine. <clears throat> Don't know how that qualified as a fast sector one because I was crawling around, but I guess it adjusts the target for the wet, which the old game never used to do. Which was upsetting. And actually, it's probably good I'm doing this practice program because the car does need um, does need some new parts. Yeah, um, it, it is very unstable, although, to be fair, they, they do seem to manage it far better in quality in the race. I guess they just use practice to, to figure out where the limit is, which is what it's for. Um, but it does make me think that racing wheel-to-wheel -wheel under pressure, I do wonder if, um, if, in part, it's always at the back of your mind that the car might just turn on you and then, you know for want of a better term, you're fucked. Um, <clears throat> or if they'll just lose it while while racing rather than just managing the um, the overall pace. It's it's going to be interesting to see because, I mean, the Ferrari has um, similar problems. It's just Leclerc's far better at masking them. <clears throat> oh, we unlocked a goal completely by accident. You may have noticed, look at that, I, I was complaining that I'll never get to level 30, but um, I'm almost a third of the way there, and um, there's still 20 days or so of the month to go, so I might actually make it, and haven't had to spend a penny. Simon's supposed to be getting the game today, depending on the quirks of the British Postal Service. Um, it used to be I pre-ordered these games the same way, and um, they'd always ship a day early. So it was, it was better to do it over the digital store because the digital store would have a countdown, but you could often play 24 hours early if you had a physical copy. But uh, game developers started to get really pissed at people for sending them out early. So um, I had an Amazon order this year, but it became clear that it wasn't going to arrive until like 9 p.m. on launch day. And that means I've lost... 21 hours of potential gameplay by then and um, Simon and I always try and play on launch day because at least for our YouTube channels that's your best chance of getting an audience because otherwise people just stick to Arava and um, uh, Tia McMarduck and you know the, the, the typical F1 streamer uh, guys uh, to be fair they don't even stream actually they record, edit and then do commentary over um, but you know they get all the views um, and back in like 2013-14 it would work 
but uh, now it doesn't work because even if I get the game early as a physical copy, they give it to those fuckers like a week before anyone can get it. Um, I need to speak to Simon about it. I would I would like to to have content weekly, um, and I think what we may end up doing is um, keeping the, the video game playthrough to once a fortnight and then each week um, have a, an actual podcast for an hour just no gameplay just a proper chat where we can talk properly and, and hang out just have like a, a socialized stream um, and we'll see how that goes down because um, yeah we need to order some fake instagram followers that's that's true to be fair we've been doing pretty good at getting real ones we set up a failcast f1 account and um i i work in well i have worked in marketing for for a few years it's not really what i do now but parts of my area responsibility go in that area and we've managed to grow the instagram way faster than we've grown than anything else we've done um and now it's a case of trying to convert them from people who are sort of casually absorbing clips and so on into people who either join the streams or catch us on youtube my youtube numbers are looking really good and these streams get copied over to my youtube and they get way more views than we get on twitch so uh, maybe i need to move and stream on youtube because um, a lot of the viewers who follow us around are the same age as us and i was reluctant to join twitch because i felt it made me feel old uh, i didn't understand twitch for a long time now i quite like it but back then I was stubborn <clears throat> and I only moved to Twitch because Simon streams on YouTube and wanted to try and reach more people and we were both planning to move to Mixer but now Mixer's closing down so um, <clears throat> the plan now from my side at least and I have to I have to talk to Simon about it um, is to have a, a, a proper podcast where we can upload an audio file somewhere as well because we can't do the failcast podcast that way because we're like ooh, ooh, and you, there's a racing noise in the background but people can't see what's going on so when we stop in the middle of a sentence to have a breakdown um no one will have any context um we also have a series now on instagram live so i did the first episode i'll probably do the second and simon can do the third where between quality and race um it's just like a, a short I don't know, five minute roundup of, of what happened in qualifying, what's happening in the race, and um, we'll see if that picks up any viewers as well. I, I don't know, it's hard, it's hard really. Neither was once a huge audience, but it, it, it would be nice to um, expand on um, you and Beetlejuice, and there's two or three others that pop in for streams when they can. Um, just so we have a bit more chat going, you know. Um, um, hopefully we can find a way to merge the chat rooms it's theoretically possible because what tends to happen is there's a youtube chat going on and a twitch chat with me going on and it's really hard to coordinate everything hey beetlejuice how are you doing mate are you having uh, are you having a good day do you know i specifically for you in the hope that you would you would be able to make it this evening i um i have done a practice session so you didn't miss Mick Schumacher's um, debut. Pete's a good man, good man. Um, yeah, do you know, do you know, Wodge, um, the one thing that's on that channel that I'm genuinely proud of is actually Grand Prix World because I ended up doing it so long that we got the format down exactly right. Because initially I was trying to do full races but it was too unstable and kept crashing and it would stretch episodes out to like two hours long and no one's got time for that um it's a bit easier with the stream because that's something you can have on in the background you can chat a bit and you can drop in and out um but to expect someone to sit for a, a video with no interaction for that long i think he's asking a bit much and getting like now i can just naturally do an episode in 18 to, to 22 minutes it just sort of naturally falls around there so if I can get the podcasts um, with Simon into sort of the same realm of competence one day, um, I'm sure we'll be heading in the right direction. So uh, Mick Schumacher's first qualifying session. Um, 
and we get a chance now to see if our predictions are true, that he is secretly overpowered. And the shadowy cabal, presumably backed by Ferrari, have strong arm co-masters into boosting his stats. Still not enough development points yet to order any more developments, but we do have uh, a durability uh, upgrade for the turbo and a powertrain upgrade. Yeah, I was gonna, in his defense though, mate, in his defense, they all look smug <laughs> when they're sat opposite you. Oh, careful. This, this could escalate quite quickly into a petty tit-for-tat revenge cycle. I'm hoping at some point um, Simon goes live um, because I'm actually really excited for his My Team stream um, or My, my Team series. Um, he's uh, doing a Minardi re revival playthrough and um, he's more knowledgeable about F2 drivers than I am so I think it's, I think it's going to be fun. Um, you should watch. If you don't, I will correct this injustice. Um, but I tick the same boxes for both of you, so um, we will figure it out. I wonder if I, I can't do it through the app, can I? Because the app's really underpowered. Um, I will fix this for you, though, mate. Don't, don't you worry. Maybe I maybe I saved at the wrong time or something. You know how incompetent I am. Right, I'm actually going to wait before going out because I want to go on board with Mick Schumacher. I want to see. I want to see if. Um, if you want to know specific information or make certain changes to the car, coming out. There he is. Tell me what you want over the radio. Press and hold the radio button to activate the system, and you can either speak the command or select it manually from the radio screen that will appear it's on the helmet. display. While the radio is active, cycle through command groups with the MFD button. Oh shit! Watch, we forgot to put the Silverstone livery on. Ah, we'll we'll do it next year. <laughs> we'll do it next year. Um, yeah, I'm I'm hoping uh, that he can outperform Jordan King. There's no guarantee of that, because on paper his stats are worse, but um, I will also like, though, Codemasters, if you ever hear this, the ability to make this screen bigger. Like, get rid of everything and just watch it like I'm watching TV. It'd be nice to, to see. Um, that said, um, I was talking with Wodge before you got here, Beetlejuice, um, that we're moving over to a capture card system with proper graphics and everything. Um, hopefully this month, maybe the start of next month. Um, because last night when the stream died, part of it was the game's fault, but also the PlayStation overheats while, while streaming and playing the game. Um, I will be upgrading to PlayStation 5 when that comes out, but it'll be F1 2021 will be the first game on there, I guess. Um, but I have a 4K webcam already, I have a fancy microphone, I have a backdrop, uh, I'm just waiting for the capture card, and then um, we will have a more professional streamy type setup where also I can interact a bit better with people. And I'm sure I'll find a way to fuck it up, don't worry. Right, let's watch for his first sector time. I need a reference. Fastest is, uh, it's compared to Gasly, 28.1. So he's already two tenths down on Pierre Gasly in the first sector. Still though, I mean, for him, the... Uh, they didn't actually, which surprised me, but it tells me that um, the game's a bit more refined than last year. Uh, he's gone the road of Joe Leon. I can't say that he's got a job in uh, the broadcast industry, but he is currently a free agent. Um, but 
drivers can move mid-season, they just haven't, uh, so far at least. But I'll keep an eye on the news. Um, and I believe, if I heard correctly, that um, mid-season moves are less likely now because people were complaining about it. Um, but they can still happen, so I guess we'll see. I was expecting that as soon as I let him go, that it would trigger a, a little driver carousel because in the last game that's exactly what happened like if you left the team about five or six drivers would swap seats um sometimes less but it, often it triggered quite a few swaps and the swaps never made sense um but the drivers didn't have visible stats now the move should make more sense having said that i still stand by my uh statement that Latifi should have been dropped for King at Williams if the AI was working properly. So, don't know. But we're on a new patch version now, 1.04, and we should be on 1.05 tomorrow. Um, so, who knows what they're polishing. Um, 1.04 is supposed to fix a lot of the instability, and I have to say, it got this game working again without me having to reinstall. Where last time, the hard crash issue, I had to reinstall the whole game, so pleased about that. Uh, right, I suppose we should go and do some qualifying. He is currently ahead of George Russell, but not by much. Uh, a tenth and change ahead of George Russell. Um, he's slower in sector one, but faster in sectors two and three. That doesn't fill me with um, that doesn't fill me with confidence going into the race. But I guess I guess we'll see. <clears throat> uh, Russell is six million. Um, he's the same price as, at least at the start of the game, he's the same price as Magnussen and Lando Norris um, and Daniel Kvyat. Um They're all in the six million bracket. Sadly not. <clears throat> I do think in future though, they'll find a way in, in future games to tie like engine supply discounts to certain drivers or something. There'll, there'll, there'll be a way to, to make it a more management experience, I'm pretty sure. Particularly because it's been so well received. Um, I've, been, I've been watching other F1 content creators, and you know, once I swallow all my bile about them being more successful than me, um, it does seem that the mode, at least, if not the game as a whole, is being pretty universally pra praised. And, and I can understand why. Like, I'm really enjoying it. I thought I'd take a look at it, and then it would feel too jammed in last minute, you know, it'd feel too incomplete, not management-y enough, and I'd get bored and just go to career mode. Um, but that hasn't been the case. It, it, as a first iteration, it's just management-y enough and has just enough depth that it's able to, to suck me in and hold my attention. Um, it could definitely be better, but of course it's, a, it's just a first attempt and um, it's far more well featured than some of the other first attempts that Codemasters have done down the years. Um, so credit where it's due. And um, this playthrough in particular has been very well received over on YouTube. I've been neglecting my YouTube a little bit while I'm trying to figure out how to fix my Mac so I can finish Grand Prix World. Um, but all these videos go over there and they're getting pretty good viewing numbers and I'm getting some nice comments from people who are enjoying it, so um, it seems people generally like it, whether watching it or whatever. Wow, that was a horrible lap. That's because I was uh, trying to be informative. That's what I get. Let's try again. It's because I messed up some of the fast corners and you lose all your pace. Go shut up for a minute if that's alright, boys. Although, uh, I do want to say to you, um, Beetlejuice, I don't know, Roger and I were talking about it before. Did you see any of the free practice coverage today? Well, yeah, around here it is. That's what passes for informative around here. You you treaded the, uh, the roads long enough, you know the deal. It's impossible for me to string two thoughts together in my head. And um, driving and talking are about the limit of my brain capacity. Um, 
Oh well, there was a very nasty... Actually, do you want spoilers? Are you, are you going to go watch it on uh, the F1 service or you, you don't care? Um, there was a very interesting uh, FP2 um, where Renault were testing a 2022 part, if you can believe such a thing. Um, a rear wing which they gave to Danny Rick and it did something to his car because he had a horrible accident <laughs> and um, he limped away from the car quite badly. He looked in quite a bit of pain. So um, there's been no announcement yet about um, him being unfit or anything, but it does put the thought in my head, like how bad, how badly injured was he in that accident? Um, I mean, obviously the fact he walked away is, is brilliant, but um, I do wonder. Um, and of course we had Jack Aitken driving for Williams in FP1, which made me very happy. He had a nice celebratory uh, helmet design. And by all accounts did a pretty solid job, although uh, Nicholas uh, Latifi had a gearbox problem that ruined his session. <laughs> wow, we have no pace here. Although that said, I've turned the difficulty up again and there's a the patch from last night, 1.04, is supposed to address some some matters of difficulty as well. But yeah, this is going to be our worst qualifying of the year and I think it's also that the car is just um, slow. Okay, there's two minutes left in this session and we're in the drop zone. We need yeah, let's. I mean, over for us. I would wonder who would stand in for him. Yeah, exactly. Um, because they have to drive a practice session, right? So if he's going to be replaced, then someone would have to drive in FP3 tomorrow. And it would be it would be interesting um, to see if one of the young Renault drivers that have been passed over for next year get called up, or if. Um, Nando, out of the blue, surprise Nando. Um, because that would be newsworthy, wouldn't it? Surprise Fernando Alonso out of nowhere. Well, um, after that horrible qualifying session, um, which, to be fair, is probably more uh, reflective of the car's actual pace. Um, we are three tenths clear of our teammate, though, so um, that's pretty pretty healthy. Um, yeah, I guess we'll see what we can do in the race. But I'm going to start on the harder tyre and go long, that's for sure, and see if I can't make up um, some places that way. Yeah, honest, honestly, I, I always knew Fernando Alonso was a risk, but there was a big part of me just expecting them to go crawling back to Hulkenberg, but clearly they haven't. Some other good news today, though. Um, Williams have found some investors. Um, it's not clear yet, uh, and they, they were clear about it. It's not clear if it's going to be a, a total sale of the team or new investment. That's That's unclear but they've found some... Why do the sponsor logos keep disappearing? Sorry, now I am being incoherent. Um, it's unclear if the deal will be done before the end of August. That's what they announced. But I'm pleased that they found some investors. They haven't named them. Um, yeah, yeah, to be honest, I agree, but... Um, uh, well, the two have been separated, unfortunately, Wodge. Um, well, actually, no, Williams Engineering is the holding company that owns the F1 team, but Williams Advanced Engineering, which was the actual engineering company, uh, and that was profitable, um, they sold that to keep the F1 team afloat. Uh, they sold it last year, and that was a very short-sighted mistake. Really, they should have kept Advanced Engineering in the group and looked for shareholders then, you know, when they had a profitable arm of the business. Because, um, you know, Williams Advanced Engineering is, is very reputable. They were building um, 
flywheels for some other racing series and battery systems. Um, yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Get rid of the water pump to reduce the weight while we're filling up with water. Um, I, I really did think it was stupid, but I honestly think Claire was of the mind that the sale would make enough money to stabilise them. Um, and it might have done, but then COVID hit. And that meant sponsors were not liable to pay um, to, to upkeep their half of the deal because the team hadn't been on track and done any racing. Um, and, you know, Claire said at the outset, if, if the season gets cancelled completely, it will bankrupt us. We have to race this year. Um, and I guess they're pleased that Mugello was um, announced today as officially on the calendar plus Sochi. So we're now up to a 10 race season. So that means Max Verstappen has only DNF'd in 10% potentially of the season. But Simon, and Simon moves in mysterious ways, much like God. And um, he knows a lot of people who work in F1, more than I do. And he messaged me to say that there are three other tracks that it's basically a done thing but um, it hasn't been decided what order they're in yet and um, it hasn't been announced. One of them is Imola, uh, one of them is in Portugal, I forget the name of the circuit because I'm an idiot and I forget the third one so there you go, incompetent again. Yeah Portimao, that's it. Uh, no it's another European circuit Rog. Most of the season will be in Europe just because of the virus situation. We've got pole in the end. What a surprise. Imagine my shock. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Bethel, Leclerc, Max Verstappen and Albon. I tell you what as well, the driver performance patch that we got middle of last week made the Red Bull guys faster than the Ferraris. And now patch 1.04 seems to have put the Ferraris in front of the Red Bulls again. <sighs> yeah, you know, it's the entire race is just constantly going to be Senna, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I, I'm happy to see F1 come back to Imola and I'm hoping it goes so well that um, it finds its way back onto the circuit of uh, 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 regular rotation. Um, I used to like it when the European Grand Prix moved around tracks um, before they got greedy and started signing big money deals to keep it in one place. Because, um, you know, the European Grand Prix is at Azerbaijan for 10 years or something. Um, but it... it it would have been nice to see okay, things like, um, I know Zandvoort's back now, but Berno, Zandvoort, Imola, Brands Hatch, you know, um, Magnicor even, Heref, yeah, and just switch between them occasionally, um, just to add a bit of spice into each year. Because I'm concerned now, my honest assessment is um, 22 rounds is too many. It is too many um, and it should be the absolute limit. 21 I think was already a big ask because I mean I know as fans we want the entertainment but um, knowing a few people who work in F1 and again Simon knows even more than I do. Um, wow it's a long run on the uh, softs that kind of defeats the point of <laughs> Of, of being on the, the mediums at the start of the Grand Prix. Um, it takes a huge toll on them and their families. <laughs> I mean, I, we were talking about this yesterday, right? And we were all agreed that we want more... a more even distribution of races. The problem that we have... Um, which I know we're all aware of, is that a lot of the classic tracks do happen to be in Europe, and Europe's kind of the spiritual home of F1, it's where the most engaged fan base is. But it would be nice to include other parts of the world in the World Championship a bit more comprehensively. 
but that said, that shouldn't happen if it means we're running 25 round Grand Prix, uh, round Grand Prix seasons, you know, that's just mad in my opinion. And 22 should be the absolute upper limit because you're already, with testing, you're away from home more than you're home. And now you're in COVID lockdown as well, you're not allowed to go home. So, um, well, the drivers are allowed to go home and did, and now Charles Leclerc is under investigation from the FIA because he went home to Monaco between the two rounds in Austria and took selfies with restaurant staff. Um, Bottas also is currently under investigation, uh, although he claims, yes, I went back to Finland, but I stayed with my girlfriend and my trainer, and that's my isolation bubble. And I'll be honest, I was one of these people that was getting to the point where I was thinking, okay, all this distancing measures and lockdowns, they have to end because it's just getting impractical and, you know, the virus seems to be dying out and everything. But then yesterday after the stream went down, um, I was browsing through YouTube and I, I'm sure you guys have heard of him, Bold and Bankrupt. He's uh, like a travel vlogger who travels around um, the former Soviet Union mainly, but also Africa and Asia. And he disappeared like a month ago, and there's been, there's been no videos. And um, I just assumed he'd been told to stop making videos because he's supposed to be in lockdown. But he'd been traveling to countries where there was no lockdown just to carry on making videos, but he actually caught COVID-19. And um, his video, really hit home to me how serious it was because he nearly died and uh, I recommend you look it up actually if, you, if you've never heard of him I think it's a video everyone should watch um, because he's brutally honest about the effects of the sickness but also the treatment um, so like you know the enamels come off his teeth and uh, his dick doesn't work and he's got the body of like an 80 year old now he can't climb the stairs um, he saw two people die in, in the bed next to him. Um, it sounds really, really scary. So now, um, I'm not gonna complain anymore about wearing my mask. <laughs> it's a small price to pay. After hearing a first-hand account of what it's like, rather than just the media, whose job it is to make everything sound dramatic, but someone that you know I watch enough of to feel, feel familiar with, even if I don't really know him, um, to hear his story, I'm like, okay, this is this is super serious, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow the rules, man. Um, the question that follows from that, though, is what the punishment could possibly be for drivers who. Um, I think it, yeah, I think that it hits you right when that when as soon as it hits close to home, it's no longer like this abstract problem that you can think of as happening somewhere else. Um, it becomes a lot more real and then you're like, okay, maybe it is as bad as people were saying. Um, because, I, I mean, genuinely, you should look up the Bold and Bankrupt video. It's the last one he made and he's not gonna make another for a while because he has to rehab. Um, but the, the story of him, uh, the, the, the person next to him dying, and it was just out of nowhere. Just uh, Bold and Bankrupt, B-A-L-D, and bankrupt. Um, his videos are great actually, he's super gregarious and outgoing and he speaks Russian and um, he just travels around making friends with people and, and doing unusual things, it's quite entertaining. Um, well yeah and actually this is why I think his video is particularly valuable viewing right because he puts no one um, at fault but himself for what happened to him and he said um, look how well I held that it's almost like I know what I'm doing um, he pointed out that part of the reason he was breaking quarantine restrictions knowingly was in one sense it didn't feel real to him and in another sense he felt pressure from social media and from doing YouTube that he had to keep making content and he had to stay relevant and you know now he's saying look I, I don't care I'm going to be gone for a few months and if I lose um, 
viewers, then you know I understand, but it's just not worth it. And I, I can't help but sympathise with that. And it's good to see someone not only taking that position, but but sharing it and making a point of saying, it, just take care of yourself. That, that's what matters, right? Because the yeah, the story he tells about the person in the bed next to him dying that that's truly terrifying. Because he said, you always think it's like a gradual deterioration. But this guy just flatlined. One minute he was sat there, the next he flatlined. Uh, they tried to resuscitate him, couldn't do anything. Pull a sheet over his head, gone. That's it, done. Um, and he said it wasn't even an old person; it was someone of a similar age to him. And you know, you kind of think, well, it's only the old people that die. And he said, when you're sat in intensive care with like a breathing mask on, and a guy next to you who is in the same demographic just drops dead <laughs> suddenly you don't sleep so easy um so yeah please everyone do stay healthy um but to bring it back to f1 i do wonder given how seriously the sport is taking it i do wonder what what possible repercussions there could be for people like bottas and uh, vettel and leclerc for breaking the rules like that Uh, keep current. Confirmed. Was he really suggesting to me a zero stop strategy there? Old Jeff's back then, the Jeff who wants me to get disqualified. I tell you what, guys, the car genuinely has no pace here. I wonder if we're going to struggle like this at Monza as well. I suspect we will. I suspect we will. Because I'm not doing anything different. I mean, I've turned the difficulty up again but uh, I'm not doing anything different to what I would normally do and we actually have a reasonably new power unit in so I can't even blame it on engine wear um, and Silverstone is usually one of my strongest tracks it's one of the few that I win in the podcast so um, to have the pace we've had at the earlier races suddenly evaporate here is a little encouraging for the game's perspective but scary for me Yeah, um, I was going to ask you about that actually, Wodj. Um, because in the first version of, of the game to have DRS, if you tried to, if you touched the wheel at all with DRS open, you just fly into a spin. And then they um, kind of fixed it so it was a bit more grounded. But then in 2017, it was sort of a reversal and it went back to DRS making you super unstable, which I think is a good thing ultimately. You're way too stable with DRS open in this version of the game, I can tell you that. Um, it just makes you faster, the car doesn't feel any less planted. But, I don't know if that's necessarily realistic, because the cars are uh, heavier now, with more mechanical grip and fatter tyres. Oh, good an appetit, my friend. Um, or whatever you say in your part of Switzerland. Are you a guten appetit man or a bon appetit? Oh, I wish I had an ass now. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, how's that? I bet I've done that all wrong, right? Do you know, when I really try, um, and I speak slowly, which I don't do generally, that's why I trip over my words a bit. Um, but if I speak slowly, my pronunciation in German is actually pretty good, because um, for a long time, um, when I first got here, my girlfriend was teaching me. And rather than teaching me new words, she would just constantly pull me up on the pronunciation. So I was in this strange position where i go to a party and I could say a few words or sentences immaculately, so people would think I was fluent. And then I couldn't, I couldn't say anything else because I had no vocab. Um, it's, it's better now, obviously. Um, but Swiss German, I've worked with a few Swiss people, and um, the accent obviously is noticeable, but the um, I got a text message off one once that was meant to go to a different Ben, a Swiss Ben. And honestly, mate, I couldn't understand the fucking word of it. I, I had no idea what she was saying. 
But you know, dialect is fun. And I must say, I like Switzerland far more than I like Germany. Even if everything costs a million pounds. And um, I have to change my money into francs. And um, I always lose money on the exchange. I was on someone else's stream earlier and um, we were talking about Wales. And um, I still think, and I shouldn't say this because my family's Scottish and um, some of my older families would speak Gaelic, but um, I still have this theory that Welsh is an entirely fabricated language whose purpose is only there to be spoken so tourists can't understand what you're saying. And I kind of wonder if that's the same deal with uh, texting in Swiss German. If it's just all an elaborate scheme to make sure to make sure that um, no one can understand when you're talking about them. <laughs> um, I've kept that old engine, Wodge. Um, we can use it in a practice session at least, if not a race, for a laugh. Um, just to see if we can push it to the point of failure, I think that could be fun. But it's not in the car at the moment. In the car I have um, one that's only one race old. And that's why... Oh, oh no, I do have an engine warning light. Oh, hello darkness, my old friend. And I'm overheating the front tires again. That's, that's why we're so slow. That actually takes far more out of your pace than having a worn engine does. And it's always the front left, no matter which direction the circuit goes, which doesn't make any sense. Um, so, no matter how you drive, it's always the front left that overheats and it slows you down massively. No, actually, Jeff has never told me my tyres are overheated. And actually, it doesn't increase the wear rate. Um, it um, so like a, that individual tire will read as more worn, but it doesn't affect your tire life at all. Like you don't have to pit earlier because of it, uh, even when you're doing 100% races. Um, all it does is just make you slower, and we're not talking like a little bit slower. Um, it makes you really slow. Um, it knocks. We're talking well over a second um, onto your lap time and it annoyed everyone in 2019 because um, there was nothing you could do about it because the only way people found that they could manage it was by driving off the pace anyway and using a wheel because with a uh, controller you don't have the fine control necessary uh, to keep the tyres cool but the problem there is that it's been proven that driving with a, uh, a pad is faster than driving with a wheel. So, um, no one no one does drive with wheels really, unless they're forced to because uh, it's expected of them at the event they're at. And um, the same thing unfortunately has been carried over to this game that, particularly in your first season or two, if you're at the back of a group team, um, your tyres will overheat. Uh, and make you very very slow at certain circuits and you can't do anything about it until you've unlocked like most of the tech tree and there's a, an unlock just like uh, what's it called um, one's brake ducts and then there's another one for um, a, a new kind of wheel hub that your tyre goes on and these um, don't really improve performance day to day but they better manage heat in the tyres and it just stops your tyres overheating at the pre-scripted races where they will and the races are uh, France, Great Britain, Singapore, Monaco and Russia. Right, I'm definitely faster than Antonio Giovinazzi, but can I get past him? That is that is the 
question of the day. We only have three laps left to go, so we're going to have to make some token effort. There's definitely no points on the board this time, but Schumacher seemed to be running 19th, so as predicted, he's doing no better or worse than Jordan King. So signing him, at least based on the first... Um, at least based on the first race, is um, that would just save money for the same performance, which is what Beetlejuice suggested might happen. Uh, so well spotted, sir. Um, yeah, I think also the fact that the difficulty settings have been adjusted firstly by me, but also by the patch, is probably a factor as well. But I'm quite happy, you know, I, I'm, I've enjoyed this race, even though we're not fighting for points. Um, and I'm quite happy to race for 15th, 16th uh, for the rest of the season because it is more authentic. And uh, we've got enough points on the board now anyway that we're going to finish in a good place in the constructors and unlock a good sponsor. So, oh, that's something that uh, I have noticed as well actually. Drivers make genuine mistakes now. It's not just a case of them being scripted to run wide or something. Um, did you see there, Giovinazzi? Um, oh. I'm sorry, Antonio. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, but I always make genuine mistakes. That didn't have to be patched into me. Um, but if you saw, he broke traction on the corner exit there and he lost quite a lot of time. And if I'd been more awake, I could have got by him. I was a bit sneaky there, trying to sneak my way through. Um, also, I have a replay from a race that I'm going to put up on YouTube. Um, I finally finished all my placement races in multiplayer. And I, you do five races and then it gives you your safety rating. And just like in uh, last year's game, I was doing really well up until the last two races. So I've been having the best lobby races I've ever had. Um, the racing was immaculately clean and respectful it was a lot of fun I got two podiums out of my first three uh, Grand Prix and um, I've saved all the replays they'll go up on YouTube so people know that I didn't fake it um, but then I ended up um, my fourth placement race was I want to say Japan and I'm not going to name and shame the person but there was uh, a guy who um, he had a really really bad start and um, so did I because I had a I had a bit of a brain fart moment uh, so you hold down X to engage the clutch right and then you release it um, when the lights go out and then you slowly pump up the throttle. And instead, I released the throttle and held down X. Um, so everyone went somewhere and I had the worst start of my career. Anyway, this guy just made it his mission to ensure that I could never get past him. And it was some of the best driving of my career actually because I didn't hit him but he was going out of his way to make sure that I did and I thought oh brilliant I'm going to get a uh, a good safety rating here because I've not had any collisions I've not had any laps um, in qualifying um, discounted because I've um, like they have really strict track limits in multiplayer so if you even put you know two wheels over the line then you get a warning but I had no warnings, um, two podiums, I was driving really, really well, everything was cushy. Then this guy held me up. Eventually I got by him and managed to go from um, ninth to fifth, so it wasn't a total write-off, but um, I didn't hit him. But he, he joined the same race um, next time out, and he had a friend with him, I presume, and the two of them just made it their mission to ruin my race. And um, that was in Brazil. And in the end, I, I did hit one of them because, well, it was unavoidable. Um, he cut across a corner 
didn't even attempt to take it and as I came round the corner to exit he just t-boned me from the side uh, and I got a, a warning as well as presumably him so I only got a B safety rating because that was considered a major collision however um, in terms of performance I ranked at top level silver which is really really good um, so there's there's bronze silver and gold and there's five sub ranks within each color so um, I'm, I'm a full full silver which means uh, maybe at some point I can progress to gold and gold's where like the serious bots are so you know the, like the proper esports people so uh, I was really proud of that I just wish I could race that competently when uh, I'm hanging out with you guys. <laughs> what a surprise, everyone's favourite Dutchman, driver of the day. Kel Surprise. What I really want is, is um, to get a message from Simon saying, hey, my game's arrived. Uh, yeah, normally it is Simon who takes me out, actually. Um, <laughs> if I don't take myself out, it's usually him. Uh, we've, we've collided once or twice this year, but last year we collided a lot. No, he didn't. Um, and he was smart not to, really. Um, yeah, he is. Um, I'm not. I'm just impulsive and impatient. Um, and it also bothers me, like, if I'm buying a game, then I have to buy the Ultimate Edition, because I hate thinking that I haven't got everything. But, um, previously, he and I would always make sure to get it day of release, and then we'd do videos at midnight together, like a Failcast special, because, you know, back in 2013-14, when we actually built up a pretty good audience, that's how we got it. We had to be faster than the other streamers. But from since 2015, um, people like... Um, Tia McMarduk and Arava and all the big F1 streamers um, they, Codemasters give them the game five days before people like us could possibly get our hands on it so there's no way to break through anymore, uh, Alex Zafro is another one there's absolutely no way to break through and um, I've been hearing from other people that um, it's also really hard for new people to break into um, like a, a sub-genre of video making or streaming or whatever even if they're making unique content that people seem to like because the algorithms are there to protect certain entities and I put this to the test and bearing in mind this is just um, bearing in mind this is just anecdotal evidence from me but I have tested it um, I logged into my YouTube account and it was recommending to me these big F1 YouTubers and you can there's an option to say please don't recommend this channel to me anymore because I don't like it and um, I marked them all as I'm not interested in these these channels Right, my interests are still the same, I still like F1 content, I just don't want to watch these guys. And it's not that they're not good at what they do, uh, it is a little bit that I'm bitter they're more successful than me, but in reality what it is, is I find their videos overproduced. That's just to my taste. Um, because they tend to record a race offline, and then they edit it down, um, and then they do commentary over it, which is a perfectly valid way of making your content, um, and it seems popular with people. But I always wonder what they're cutting out. Because, like, if I make a fucking stupid mistake, then you guys see it. Um, with them, you don't know what they're editing out. And um, I just, you know, I, I watch a few of the videos when the new games come out to see what's going on, but I'm not generally interested. And then the next day, I came back into my app and it was recommending their videos again. Now, I know, like, there's some dodgy YouTube stuff with subscriptions and everything. So if you're subscribed to a channel that has opinions that Google doesn't like, then you won't be told when they have a new video and sometimes you'll be unsubscribed from them without being told. So we know Google does dodgy stuff, but it's almost worse in a way for you to tell YouTube, I don't want to see this, please take it away. 
and for then immediately it to be the first thing you see when you log into the app the next day. Um, so it's no wonder you end up with people like, I suppose, PewDiePie as well, although I think he's, he does a great job. His content's not aimed at me. I'm not his target demographic, but I can appreciate that. He's super entertaining and he's good at what he does. But it's how you end up with like these unassailable channels that have huge audiences and it's very hard for anyone else to break in. Fortunately, um, this isn't a rant because I'm, I'm jealous that I don't have their audience because neither Simon nor I have ever wanted an audience that big. But um, as I was saying yesterday, we're trying to put a bit more effort in just so there's a good 10, 20 people on the stream so that we can have a bit of a chat, you know, just, just lighten things up a bit. Um, not that the company of you two degenerates is not um, plenty enjoyable enough for me. Um, I just feel bad for you guys that you've only got me to talk to. <laughs> well, yeah, see, I mean, we, Simon and I have both always said as well, quality over quantity. And even when, even when uh, the fail cast was doing really well, um, the people who were like most active, we never had any trouble. And particularly, I mean, it's not something to my knowledge that Simon ever thinks about. But um, particularly with him being being gay, there's always a, a worry, right, that some arsehole's going to turn up and make drama. But we've never once had that. We've never had... And it, I just think F1 fans are a better class of people. Um, so we've always considered ourselves really lucky. Like I, I've always said, I've never met a bad person to do in Grand Prix World. Not one. Not one. There's never been a mean comment. There's never been someone who's just a dick. It's just been... A wonderful experience all the way through and I think you lose that if you're dragging in thousands and thousands of people and you lose the ability to actually talk to people and have a conversation um, I was hopping around some streams earlier today to see what I can learn about being down with the kids and what I saw is the people who have you know hundreds and thousands of viewers the chat becomes unreadable and they they have no connection to the viewers and I think that's kind of sad because it's a lot more fun for me playing this game, hanging out with you guys, than it is just doing it alone. And if it's also enjoyable for the people who, who watch, then that's a win-win situation. Um, and if it's not, then I'll never hold anybody at gunpoint to come and watch, you know. Yeah, that's true. Uh, right, what are we gonna do to use our time here, guys? Because, um, we have a sponsor event that it will cost us 5k, which is nothing out of our current budget, but will boost the marketability of the team. We can increase Mick Schumacher's pace. Um, we can boost my acclaim. We can do vehicle PR filming, which brings in 10k and 500 prestige for the team. Actually, that one's a no-brainer, isn't it, really? Because not only does that bring in money, but that's the biggest acclaim boost to our marketability. So that's good. And then we have, what, two, four, five, five days left, which means this plus two of these or this plus one of these. We're saying weight training and sponsor event. Yeah, I think weight training is good, actually. So we get start making some inroads into the development of... Um, of Mick Schumacher, so he can finally deliver on his promise. Um, also, we're still a little shy, I think, of any good upgrades. Oh no, no, we're there. So the question is where we use it. So the chassis department is our most developed department. Um, That's very kind of you to say, mate. Do you know, I really like delivery as well. It's grown on me. It's really grown on me. Um, the purple and white cars we had in proper sim racing never actually looked as good as this. So, um, right. Opinion time, lads. Powertrain upgrade or aerodynamic upgrade? Choose your poison. I mean, also we could put it in durability, but we've got a long way to go. Uh, that's an excellent question. Why don't we go take a look? Uh, we are in Hungary, Belgium, 
Italy and Singapore are the next four Grand Prix. Uh, we did get a new, you're right, Wodge, we did get a new power unit from Honda that's supposed to be better. However, um, I think what we saw there was um, that the new power unit is not that good. Um, we have two million in the bank as well, and I'm going to spend that, what do you reckon, build time or resource point generation? I need like a countdown clock behind me, like the game show. Um, but yeah, I'm, 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 in this case, I'm going to go powertrain, I think, because we've got some power circuits. Um, so, Beetlejuice has point generation. I'm going to assume, Wodge, that, that you agree. Um, so it's going to nearly bankrupt the team. <laughs> it's going to leave us with 80,000 in the bank. Um, so we're going to have to try and earn earn some money um, at the next Grand Prix. Um, try and meet some sponsor targets. The good news is, though, what you asked me yesterday was pick sponsor targets that are hard to hit. Difficulty upgrade may well have made the ones I picked ones that we have to strive for. Okay, so now we will develop uh, a cylinder head major upgrade. Oh, no, we won't because uh, we have the maximum capacity of the department set. Um, but that development finishes soon, I believe. 4th of August. So it finishes in time for Monza. Um, and then we can then we can get the major upgrade. Do you know that, that, that that's an interesting point you make. Um, but I'm more inclined to say they won't even be in Formula One in, in 2022. That's my gut feeling. Um, given we can't develop any more powertrain upgrades, do we save the points? Let's save the points to make sure we can do it when we need to. All right, time to jog some time on. Well, I mean, the team's costing them a fortune, right? And I guess switching to Renault would be extra hard for them because they buy pretty much everything they can off the shelf from Ferrari. I believe even their suspension system, at least at the rear, comes from Ferrari. So they'd have to be able to get the same from Renault. And given that they don't really understand the car they've got now, I do wonder if it's worth... Yeah, you're right. I mean, the alternative is that the team is sold. Um, if I was coming into F1 with a team, uh, in 2022 and it was my decision um, I would actually go um, I would actually go Renault um, because I believe even though it's not the best power unit right now I believe that's where you're going to get the best deal because Mercedes and Ferrari have no incentive to supply anyone else and Honda could but you'd always You'd always be um, behind Red Bull, of course. I know you'd be behind Renault as well. But Honda seemed really tied into the Red Bull relationship. And I'm not even sure you'd get a good deal from Honda. Whereas Renault, you, at least you've got the negotiation power on your side that you could probably get a reasonably good deal that everyone comes out a winner from. Because at the moment, Renault are bearing the whole cost of that engine program. Um, they have a healthy sponsorship portfolio. Yeah, actually, you, there's, a, there's a point to be made there as well. The, the Renault has taken a step forward. It's just hard to know the relative performance truly because we had a double Red Bull DNF. Um, and they're in different cars. And the Red Bull is obviously a superior machine. Um, it'd be interesting to find out which is, which is uh, producing more power and which is more drivable, but I guess we'll never have that information. Hell yeah, replace the gearbox. Hell yeah. Simon's just come online. 
And what that tells me is that his package has arrived. And this makes me remarkably happy. Um, because I wanted him to get it tonight. Because I want to hear his thoughts on it. It's almost like I don't trust my own opinion. I need validation from, from my broadcasting life partner. So I'm just messaging him now to see if he's got it. <laughs> hey, you know, we've, we've worked together a long time now. I'm perfectly comfortable around his package. <laughs> I'm perfectly comfortable around his package. I can't tell you how proud he'd be of you as well for making that joke, because usually he, he has to make the jokes himself. Um, so whenever there's, there's a sexual innuendo or a, or a gay joke on the podcast, it's always coming from him, always. You can't take that boy anywhere. Joe, funny story about Simon, actually. Um, obviously, I have him on other social media and everything. And he went to a wedding of a mutual acquaintance. Um, and he must have got very drunk because the whole of my feed that day was pictures of him pulling ridiculous faces drunk in a flower bed. <laughs> I, I love that guy, he's fucking brilliant. Uh, that's actually another good question, Wodge, because you're right. Um, then again, there are ways around it, right? Because isn't this year's uh, Alpha Tauri a slight modification of last year's Red Bull? I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it's 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 that. Yeah, that that's that's probably true. Um, plus, also, he lives in the maddest place in the world. Like, Berlin's pretty nutty, but Simon's neighbourhood is the most extreme place I've ever seen. Last year, he sent me a video of a, a guy busking with a guitar, but he was inside a trash can. I don't even know how he got in there. It's one of these ones with, like, a hole in the side, but the guy climbed in the bin and was just busking. And he has a neighbour who, like, shouts in the street and destroys things in his garden and stuff. Um... Simon lives in a bizarre parallel universe because he works in London. I've been to London. Weird stuff does happen, but nothing on the level of what happens to that boy on a weekly basis. I keep telling him he needs he needs to um, he needs to come on Instagram. Um, Simon has got the game. It's installing now. He should be a vlogger. Do you know what? I might get him a camera gimbal so he can just live stream his walk to work because it's the most insane stories every week. I'm going to, I'm going to give him a big head now as well. Um, I was just telling him that we were all talking about how much we adore him. Um, and we do. What a boy. Right. Track is quiet right now. Which part of my engine was exploding at the last Grand Prix? 12. Oh, it was the gearbox that I was getting the error for. Okay, that's good news. We'll carry on in default setup land and let's see if we can qualify better than, uh, than 16th. Flying lap. The good news is we're most of the way through the season now. There's less races to go uh, than we've completed, which means pretty soon we can come out from underneath the oppressive boot of the Chinese regime and we can have a new title sponsor. Um, and I think we've earned enough points and prestige, actually, that we should be able to get a pretty good one. 
Uh, ironically, we'd have higher prestige if we kept Jordan King, and I think that's the mechanism by which they encourage you not to change um, drivers mid-season. Because there's, there's a few ways that they try and encourage patience, but I do appreciate being given the option to fire Jordan King when we did. Um, and I'm going to give Mick Schumacher at least half a season to prove himself. But depending on where we are financially at the end of the season, particularly if we get a big new sponsor, my temptation is actually to sign um, a more reputable driver. Um, maybe even one that can outdrive me, just to, just to push the team forward and give me something to aim at. Because uh, my biggest rivals so far have been a floppy-haired Italian in an Alfa Romeo, um, instead of my own teammate, who's always been, you know, at, at the end of the Grand Prix, he's always been at least nine seconds away, with the exception of the last Grand Prix, uh, where the difference was only four seconds. Um, but still, it, it's a bit too much. Fun fact for you, the first race I ever won in all the years we've been doing the Felcast podcast was here. My first ever victory. Well, that's exactly the kind of rivalry that I enjoy most. Um, the kind of rivalry with a clear, uneven power dynamic that favours me. Um, one where he has to walk on eggshells. And then I imagine him in every interview with Will Buxton or Robot Lee McKenzie, he's sort of nervously sweating below the collar while uh, saying how great I am and how inspired he is by the level of our, um, of our rivalry. But all the while, knowing secretly at the back of his mind, he's always going to be the one to back out if we're racing each other into a corner. Network, network request failed. I hope that doesn't mean the stream's about to drop. <sighs> well, this is a much more encouraging start to qualifying. Um, because we are ahead of both Hosses, both Alphas. Um, but yeah, it seems we've found a good difficulty level now, one that's far more realistic. Um, in the development race as well, I don't know if you guys noticed, but we have dropped behind Haas. They're out developing us. Um, so it's actually really good um, that now getting points is going to be difficult. I'm, I'm relishing the challenge. Um, I'm two tenths and change off the back of Esteban Ocon. Um, so we've got it all to do. I'm immediately going to go out again and try and set another time just to try and secure our place in Q2. But we're definitely not going to make it to Q3, and that's as it should be. Universal balance is restored. My plan was to stream all night. I was going to stream till like midnight, but at some point, honestly, I want to go over and watch Simon's stream because uh, a Minardi revival is right up my street and um, I want to hear his opinion. Quiet though, don't tell him I respect his opinion. It's going to mess up our whole relationship. So, good gains in the first corner. Ran out a bit too wide. Um, tonight, actually. Um, tonight, moving from Toro Rosso colours to Renault Sport colours. Um, but you may only get to see that once because um, I'm hoping to have the capture card and everything set up very soon and we have someone with more talent than me designing something for us. If I don't like it, because um, honestly I only want to do this once, um, I'm going to go to StreamShark, which is a professional design agency where I'm going to have to spend a bit of money. But uh, I, I stream natively PS4, so there's no PC involved. I'm about to stream PS4 to PC because it's more powerful. I balls up that lap. Damn it. 
and look at the tire temperatures again. Um, this tells me actually we're going to have to do more on the chassis upgrades because by the end of one hot lap, the car was no longer able to carry speed through the corners and I came into the final sector with a four or five tenth um, improvement only to lose it in the slow corners because the, the tire heating issue. Grand Prix World is, believe it or not, on a 2011 27 inch iMac with a boot camp windows partition. Yeah, well, I mean, I've got, um, I, I have got something that I think would be up to the job, um, at least as an interim solution. But yeah, all I can do is try. I'm, I'm, I'm going to test it with um, the laptop I've got which is a, a fancy, expensive Microsoft Surface that's actually underpowered in terms of its internals, just like every fancy laptop is. But, I mean, to be fair, it handles video editing and photo editing really, really well. So, um, and because I'm not playing the actual game on it because it doesn't have a decent graphics card, I'm, I'm just hoping that it can do the job until I've got um, a gauge on whether it's worth investing in something even more professional. In big news, Mick Schumacher is currently faster than us. And he's going to stay faster than us because I missed my breaking point. <laughs> I'm going to try and just be a bit easier on my tyres and see if... Um, I can keep the temperatures down long enough to, to actually go faster by the end of the Grand Prix, uh, by the end of the lap. So just, you know, really easy on the stick as if I'm driving the tyre program in practice. But already I can feel the, the front left going. And now I'm bottassing all over the kerbs. car won't turn. So this is where I lost all my time last time. Break early. Go slow to go fast. That's better. It's not enough to put us in front of Mick, I don't think. Oh no, it is. Ha! Bada cha! Picking my nose in celebration. I've got an itch up there. Woo! Hopefully we can stay in front because it would be embarrassing. Um, yeah, I'm going to become second driver at my own team. He put in a really good qualifying lap. Um, so I'm lining up P14, he's P18. That feels a little unjust actually because he was ahead of Magnussen and Raikkonen who must have pipped him at the, at the last minute. Um, because he's ended up three tenths down on Magnussen, who he was faster than at one point. So, still, uh, I can't tell you how glad I am to, in the end, not have been outqualified by him. <laughs> um, do you know what I'd like? I know it sounds really, really stupid, but it would be nice just as an option to drive for your own team in the first season and then just leave your team to run itself and have a driver career. Because I, I, I wonder who they'd replace me with. It would be funny to find out. I mean, to be honest, I can be replaced by a yogurt. Um, so maybe they just replace me with a yogurt. Um, I don't have any fresh softs to try and get out of this qualifying session. And um, even on fresh softs, there's no way I'm faster than anybody in here. So I'm going to do one lap at the end of the session on mediums. That's obviously going to leave me 15th, but um, that's all we can do. Neither are in the game, unfortunately. It's just the current F1 grid and a portion of the F2 grid, because I don't believe it's the whole F2 grid. Plus Antoine Hubert is a rather touching tribute. I suspect they will, mate. 
I, I, they seem to have a DLC store built into the game. Um, so I'm guessing they very well may add in extra drivers as well as extra liveries and so on. Oh, it's all academic now anyway because um, everyone's qualified on dry tyres and it's now raining. <laughs> Never mind, no qualifying lap for me. We've made him blush, I think. Okay, so obviously we will be starting um, P16. Behind Daniel Ricciardo's Renault, Sebastian Vettel's Ferrari, and Max Verstappen's Red Bull. So it's a very shaken up grid. Um, that's not a vacuum cleaner, mate. That is uh, my PlayStation's cooling fan. Let me turn the microphone a little bit. It's a directional mic, so hopefully you shouldn't hear it anymore either that or you're having a stroke unfortunately i'm not a medical professional um surprises of that session daniel kvyat lining up p3 in the alpha towery with lando norris for company on the second row of the grid both alpha towers and racing points made it into q3 esteban ocon out qualified bottas raikkonen verstappen and vettel um, brilliant, brilliant. This is going to be a fun race now because we are um, behind drivers who are out of pace, out of place, and maybe we can follow them through some of the cars ahead. We can slipstream our way through. I'm excited now. Do you know, Beetlejuice, I can't tell if that was... Um, uh, a joke or a genuine prediction because it could honestly fall into the category of either I could see them doing it I could see them doing it I really could <laughs> Fernando Alonso DLC pack add in one or two more of his Renault cars that he drove in his career um, I know there's one in there already but they could put in the ugly ING one that um, brought around the crashing scandal <laughs> Um, I'd love to see him bring in his Minardi, but obviously it's really hard to... It's really unclear who owns the licensing for Minardi designs as well. Because Paul Stoddart bought the cars. Um, and he has the rights to the Minardi name outside Europe. And then inside Europe, the Minardi name is still property of Giancarlo Minardi. But he doesn't own the cars. It's complicated. He does, though, however, organise a Minardi Heritage Day once a year at Imola, and uh, it's been cancelled this year because of COVID, but I'm definitely going next year. That's my goal. Uh, the two-seaters, uh, for a while, they were run still by Stoddart with uh, Mike Gascoigne. Um, now, though, it's a, it's a different company. I, I'm not sure if Stoddart's involved in that company, but it, it, was, it was Stoddart for a long time. Yeah, it should be. Um, but he's a really bad traveller. His job doesn't let him travel very much. And he spends all his money on, um, like, Japanese games and accessories and um, apparently uh, takeaway. Something he does on his channel that I think is brilliant and we should uh, adopt on the Failcast is he plays uh, takeaway bingo. So... Um, with his, his live chat um, they play games to derive numbers and then he has to order the items that have those numbers on the takeaway menu um, so he never knows what he's going to get it's, um, it's quite fun his, his late night drunk streams are the ones that um, where I think he shines yeah. <laughs> to be honest Minardi should be enough to get in there because He's he's one of the hardcore, genuine Minardi lovers. I mean, I love him too, but it would be the perfect place for the two of us to meet for the first time. Go to Minardi Day at Imola. I love this grid. People have got penalties, it seems, because Kvyat was third before. 
Max Verstappen and Vettel. Oh no, maybe Williams, it didn't give me the final Magnus ranking. That's what it was. Schumacher, That's annoying. Giovinazzi, Grosjean, Russell, and Nicholas Latifi. It's almost time for the. Get back where you belong, Latifi. Down at the bottom. You racing peasant. I am hoping Jordan King finds a new seat. I'm quite proud of how quickly he developed, to be honest, because he went from a, a 61 rated driver to a 75 in half a season. That's pretty solid uh, progression. It's just the game didn't reflect it. Still got my Renault Plague mask here. In case, in case of any plague related emergencies. I still think that's a great little marketing touch to make your own plague masks. Um, Minardi and William, Minardi, McLaren and Williams have them too, but they're selling them. I got this as like a freebie. Woo, role yeah, everyone loves a bit of roleplay. Sp spice things up, make sure the stream doesn't get stale, make sure you don't get sick of me. Um, I'm going to start on... I'm going for a classic, definitely zero, counter strategy. It says it's slower, but that's a lie. Um, one last quick... message check we're all good let's let's do this oh i feel an accident coming on I was so scared to come back onto the track then. <laughs> I missed my breaking point massively. But it did get me past people. <laughs> that was another accidental overtake. I don't know if I should feel honoured or, or sad or lucky or what, but all my best overtakes in this series have been completely by accident. I got Verstappen at Zandvoort as well, if you remember. That was an accidental overtake that I didn't That's intend. What we like to see at the start. Well done. No, Vettel. I'm leaving the room, but no, you're not allowed. So, as predicted, Verstappen is held up by uh, the Alpha Tauris. Apparently, uh, Red Bull team orders are not in effect at the moment. I'm going to immediately press the overtake button to keep Vettel hopefully behind me, because if I'm going to ruin anyone's race, apart from Max Verstappen, it's going to be his. The good news is as well, I believe that Mick Schumacher started on the softs, if memory serves, so there's no chance of us double stacking in the pits. And I'm going to take a severe grid penalty at Monza. Um, because at some point I'm going to have to, and I'd rather take a big one all at once than uh, continually suffering race after race by changing each component as it wears out. Um, I'm also a little concerned that we're behind Haas in terms of development, so I may have to start actually doing the practice programs. Um, in previous versions of the game it didn't matter so much, you could simulate uh, practice and it held you back but not so much that you would um, desperately fall behind, but Haas actually have opened up a little bit of a gap to us so um, I'm going to have to do something about that if I want to improve things and it shows actually that Mick Schumacher's done okay really because uh, Jordan King wasn't qualifying that high up um, at the start of his time as a team.
I do love this circuit. I find it super cathartic to drive. I can just tune everything out and get into a, a zone with it. It's, it's got a flow that I like. And also, as you know, I'm super fond of it because of 1997. How good would it have been if he'd won that race? That would have been like the culmination of my of all my hopes for the year. Yeah, I mean, actually, I, I, I always say, you know, that I was, a, I was a big Damon Hill fan, but like most F1 fans, um, I, I don't think a lot of us have a de facto favourite driver that, you know, I mean, there are some, obviously, that are Hamilton fanboys or Verstappen fanboys, but I think, by and large, the, the sport as a whole, the fans just, they may have a cluster of drivers that they have affection for, but... Really, you're often only as good as your last few races, and um, and you build a legacy over time. And it it, it was it's perfectly possible to be, say, um, as I was, a Jean Alesi fan and a Damon Hill fan, but also pay special attention to people like Mika Salo, who I also liked. Um, and of course, um, Jacques Villeneuve, because. I mean, do you remember how exciting he was when he entered the sport? Like, it was it was such a big deal, at least in, in Britain. Even though, like, we had a British world champion in, in, in Damon Hill, he sort of shook up the paddock a bit. And the only other person I can think of who had the same kind of effect was um, Juan Pablo Montoya at the start of his Williams career. Like, he, he was sort of, like, the exciting driver and the one everyone's hopes... Um, was kind of pinned to and I loved Montoya's early years and I loved that Williams with the ugly walrus nose that everyone else hates but I really liked that nose other good moments I enjoyed though I mean 97 actually was one of my favourite years because also you had the uh the last win of Gerhard Berger in the Benetton and he had a hell of a season to go out on like to be clearly the oldest man on the grid his father died that year um, he got really sick as well and yet he had a super super strong season like that's that's the way you want to go out like if you've had a long career I think that's the, the retirement season that you dream of um, and I think very few drivers get the last race that they would have hoped for, but the last season is a is a good alternative. And I often wonder, actually, if uh, Nico Rosberg knew it was his last season going into it. Um, I mean, I know that he wouldn't have retired if he hadn't have won it, but the deal was, because it was taking such a toll on his family, that they'd support him to win the world championship and then he'd retire and prioritize them because you know he, he had a his first child was born while he was at, still at mercedes and his his wife was left dealing with the kids all the time and he was super focused on trying to win the title mm -hmm. and then you know they've got a second kid since and it's it's very very draining and I kind of respect him actually for making that decision. Um, to say, okay, I've achieved my goal, I'm walking away now. People can choose to speculate about whether I was good enough to deserve it, but I won it. Yeah, I mean, th that's it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with admitting that. So few top level sports people are prepared to sort of shake hands and say, okay, I've, I've been beat. And while Rosberg stopped short of saying outright Lewis is the better driver publicly, I think it was pretty clear that he understood that he couldn't sustain the monumental effort it took to win the championship for another year. And more power to him. More power to him, man. Vettel is stopping now. Well, it must have been, right? I mean, also, if you remember the years before, 
his form was very up and down and um, he started the 2014 season looking like a, a hobo who'd been sleeping on a park bench he was really dishevelled and it looked like he hadn't been sleeping and um, you know they really were getting into each other's heads uh, pretty much constantly and Lewis is very good at playing the mind games as well um, and you know he's possibly the greatest driver of all time um, so yeah there's by no means any shame at all in deciding to walk away and considering yourself very lucky to have the title that you won um, and Bottas very well may do the same I don't think he'd retire but I don't think his lifespan at Mercedes is necessarily all that long even if he wins the title it really depends on how long Hamilton chooses to keep going and I think the reason they haven't promoted Russell already or, or swapped uh, Bottas for somebody else at least was simply that there's no guarantee about how long Hamilton will will continue for he's really hard to read in that regard and he, he always comes across as quite um, he's an emotional guy and you know already a few years ago it looked like he was getting ready to transition into like a music and fashion career and that made me think okay maybe he'll retire by, by now um, he hasn't he's kept going presumably because he's still got the car but Simon and I have always thought that if Mercedes don't crack the 2022 rules that he'd retire very quickly um so yeah, once I'm out of the corners, I will finish reading that question, mate. Um, actually, no, I don't. Um, I think you can legitimately make the argument, not everyone will agree with it, um, that as I said on another stream, Rosberg's the Rosberg's. Hold on, am I first? When the fuck did that happen? You what, mate? Um, what, 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 what? Sorry, I'm having a crisis here. Small, small mental breakdown. They are, they are gaining on me incredibly quickly though, so it won't last. Um, now I was going to say, Rosberg, um, when he won the title, it was the longest season ever. So he had to be better over a longer period of time. I think that makes him a very legitimate champion. This year is definitely going to be a, a short season. We don't know exactly how short. It's at least 10 rounds, possibly 13 now. The tyres have gone. Um, that if Bottas does win it, there'll always be that shadow hanging over it that, well, he won it in the easiest year because he didn't have to win as many races or be as consistently good. Um, I do kind of hope, even though I'd like to see Bottas win a title because I think it'd be a nice feel-good story and it'd be a change-up for the, for the long-term fans, We're approaching the pit window. I would... Soft. I would like to see more rounds added to the calendar purely because um, I feel a bit bad for Red Bull already and I'd like to see a close championship and I think Red Bull over the course of a season would be the ones, oh the car does not want to stop. Um, I'm going to let Charles go, I have to. Um, they'd be the ones over the course of a season to, to really bring the challenge to Mercedes. And if we only had an eight round championship, which at one stage looked realistic, then they've already fallen perhaps irre irretrievably behind at the first Grand Prix, which really sucks given how hard they work and how fundamentally good, if unstable, the car is.
Carlos Sainz going for the podium as well. Good lad. To Sainz Leclerc 1-2 at the moment. I hope one day that's art imitating life. I really hope we get a full season next year. It's so hard to say. Because... Um, as we were talking about coronavirus before, it really does seem to come down to whether a, a, a vaccine that works can be deployed in time. The idea is maybe we'll have one by the end of the year, but it's by no means guaranteed. And the season starts in March, right? So we may still find that um, we have a difficult start to the season next year, although they do have time to plan for it now. And also, you never know if there's going to be a second wave or not. Um, because here there's a, a podcast. It was daily, but now as things have calmed down, it's less often with um, Christian Drosten, who's a, a very reputable virologist. And he's of the view that when flu season comes around, and given that we're not socially distancing anymore, like in Berlin, there's no social distancing rules anymore. You have to wear a mask in the supermarket and on the train, but... That, that you know you can go to the pub and you can sit next to each other and everything now um, he thinks that we may see a really big second wave um, of infections and if that happened in December January then that's really going to fuck up the start of the F1 season which you know very first world problem it doesn't like everyone's really close doesn't it it's really really close and even the Williams is in the mix. Oh, who's that's retiring? Do you know, considering the car will not steer for shit, um, our pace isn't that bad. Keeping up with Carlos here. I just have to brake earlier than him because otherwise the tyres don't hold the racing line. But soon we're going to be on fresh softs and I'll get one or two really fast laps uh, before they overheat as well. But I am wondering, if I save my battery now, could I do a Lando Norris and end up with um, a fastest lap? Because everyone else is on a slow tyre that will be worn at this stage in the Grand Prix. It's worth a shot, right? I'm going to need to get another cold beverage after this Grand Prix. I've got a fridge full of ethically sourced cola. This is my smug ethical face, if you like it. Mm. Have you noticed as well, our pit stops are really slow. Exit, exit now. They're always 2.8, 2.9 seconds. And I'm wondering if you have to invest in the personnel section of your factory to reduce the time, because uh, in previous uh, games, you negotiated faster pit stops into your contract, which I thought at the time was a stupid fucking mechanism, as if that's how it works in the real world. Like, take a pay cut and we'll give you faster um, pit stops. That is ridiculous. Um, but there must be a measurement by which you can improve pit stops, because um, I was playing my uh, career mode, uh, my offline that I do just for myself, um, this morning, I got up early before work, and I noticed that Alpha Towery, which I'm playing um, in career mode, they don't have the fastest pit stops either. They're about 2.5 seconds, and um, when I watched the replay, um, I could actually see that other teams were producing faster pit stops, so there definitely is variability. I wonder if it's a case of um, we're not making an effort because of the stipulation in your contract or if you just get whichever pit mechanics are fattest. So like the number one driver gets like the, the young fit guys and then the second driver gets, you know, Bob Pyman, the 20-year uh, the veteran of the sport who's uh, 
divorced and fat. Like, that's far more believable than just a, an agreement by which uh, you say we're giving you slow pit stops because reasons. <laughs> I'm faster than you, Raikkonen. Let me buy because my teammate's catching me and I don't like that. Look at that, purple sector one. And you're ruining it for me. Why do you hate me? Come on, I wanna get a I wanna get a, a racing overtake on you. The problem is my car's working so hard to stay on the racing line that even when I'm catching him, I don't have enough grip to move off the racing line to get round him. You end up just getting away. <laughs> yeah, yeah someone's elderly divorcee aunt. To be fair, she'd probably be quicker than the guys we've got at my team right now. Because three seconds for a pit stop, that's stupid. Like, professional teams these days they only give you a pit stop of that length if one of them balls something up. I think I'm losing my chance to get by Raikkonen because, again, the tyres are overheating. But there's, I've just not had the pace at a good overtaking spot, and I can only catch him if I follow the racing line. And as soon as I move off it, as soon as I move off it, he um, he'd just get away. See, what I tried there was um, what we call a pro gamer move, and uh, it did not come off. <laughs> It's the uh, miss your breaking point, charge into them and hope they turn into a uh, an inert gas uh, in front of you that you can just pass through. Right, overtake button. Come on, come on. Got the DRS, but he's got faster power unit. And like. You see, I'm just close enough that in the braking zone I'll catch up to him. But, um... Yes, I, I have. Um, but I'm not talented enough to do it while streaming because it requires far too much... You can do that. It's called Pro Career Mode. You have to enable it. And it turns off all the assists and everything. And I'll be honest with you, I can't do live discussion and commentary without assists. And, like, the, the corner markers. If I'm playing by myself offline, then I, I turn off as much as I can. Sometimes I'm feeling lazy in the day and I'll turn one or two assists on just to, because I'm feeling a bit brainless. But uh, when I'm streaming, because I don't record, um, I don't pre-record and then edit and do commentary afterwards because I don't think it's as much fun. Um, I need, I need the, uh, I need the kitty gloves on. I need the, the floaty wings of Formula One. The, uh, the stabilizer wheels. I mean, you know how inept I am. I mean, even with the uh, assist song, while I'm trying to talk to you, I'm still crashing constantly. Yeah, this car is not... not a great overtaker. Yeah, of course, braking assist is off, and, and steering assist is off. But I have... Uh, Limited traction control, I have uh, pit release assist, um, I meant to turn off um, start assist because I'm quite good at manual starts and they're always faster. Um, and I have the corner indicators on.
Um, it's probably you're losing uh, delta speed in the corners, no? But also, um, I, I will inappropriately downshift for you in a minute to show you that I can control the shifting. P10 in sight, yeah, but I'm never going to get it because particularly when cars are following each other, it's very hard to overtake. Because if you go fast enough to get back, the, back past the first one, you, um, you smash into the back of the one ahead of him. <laughs> but who's going slowly at the front of that head? Is that Ocon? It looks like Ocon. Tell you what though, even if I finish here, if I'm on the pace with all these guys and I'm close to five seconds clear of Schumacher, I will I will accept that as a pretty decent result by the the new standards of the difficulty settings that we've chosen. Which are now ninety percent AI. Less than a of fuel now. Oh. Tank is empty. I'm sorry. <sighs> Frustrated there. Well, I, I think I'm benefiting right now uh, from being on the red wall tyres um, because they're all on the slower, harder compound. It's just my car, you can see, overheats its tyres. Although actually right now they're not so bad because I'm not really able to push. And I've got some help from the slipstream. Let's try being brave. Last chance saloon. No, the car just can't hold the line. Not like Toto. They can always hold the line because love is not always on time. Only the old people will get that reference. Valtteri Bottas, driver of the day. Oh, Simon is live. I'm going to watch him on replay then because I didn't think he'd be live this early. His game's installed very quickly. But this means again we have no cash bonuses. Uh, the team may start to struggle financially now because most of our money was coming. He's not on Twitch, mate. He's uh, he only streams on YouTube, uh, and his channel is Higher Plane Games. If you're gonna go check him out, which you know, please feel free to. Please say hi from me, and give him moi, moi, mm. hello, darling, moi. I don't know how you type that, but you'll figure it out. You're smart. I, I believe in you. Ooh, look at that! I've unlocked some gloves I don't want. So, Carlos Sainz held on for his podium. What a boy. Um, Norris also coming home in the points. Um, no, higher playing games, but do do recommend that title to him. Um, let me put it in chat for you, because it's my accent's probably making me hard to understand. I have a very uncouth and um, unfashionable accent. No, I don't want to watch myself. No, I don't want to watch myself. There you go. Uh, but yeah, he should be called high in playing games. Although he doesn't get high, he just gets drunk and increasingly fat because he orders a lot of takeout food. But then again, don't we both? I'm full of chicken. I was too lazy to cook. Um, excuse me just a moment, everybody. I'm going to grab a beverage out of the fridge after I've dealt with Robot Lee McKenzie. And then we're going to see how much financial trouble we've put the team into without, um, <laughs> without intending to.
Um, things could have gone better. But I did enjoy myself. Why can't I have a hybrid answer? Um, it's either lack of downforce or wheelbase. Um, also, the wear is an issue. I'm going to say wheelbase. Because it was something, it was just holding the racing line, to be honest. The, the car seemed to have pace. Um, it's just, we were losing a lot of time in the corners because either on the first stint, the tyres were super overheated and that meant we just weren't holding on. Um, we're now going to fall behind in our rivalry with Pierre Gasly as well. And again, we've made no money um, through sponsor bonuses two rounds in a row. This could be a bit of a difficult time for the team. I'm hoping, though, that we've done enough to earn prize money by the end of the season that will um, allow us some substantial income. Oh. Right, tasty beverage. One second. Oh. that running my own team buying ethically sourced cola and i still have to manage my own headphone wires this wouldn't happen to proper streamers ah oh, right <clears throat> oh we have a press interview coming up on the 8th that's a chance to hopefully boost some marketability um the team's acclaim level has stopped rising um and we also have a season break coming up. I wonder what that means. Maybe that's when other drivers change teams. What the fucking hell is going on with my hair? I still haven't had my hair cut, so it, it's kind of doing its own thing. I just caught a glimpse of myself gradually morphing into Mr. Burns. It just looked, it looked for a second like I had a really receding hairline and it's one of the few things that isn't wrong with my body. So um, that's why I got all emotional about it. Um, we have four days to spend. I'm gonna spend it on Sponsor advertisement because that puts more money in the bank not a huge amount, but it also improves the marketability of the team um, And it uses all the time um, I don't really now want to invest too much in our second driver because he might start beating me <laughs> And then I would look quite the fool um, By the end of the next practice, we should have enough points as well to um, have two major updates to the car. Um, so I'm actually going to start one now on the aero. So let me see which one has the biggest effect. Takes us to the end, middle of the end, end of the end. So rear wing, upper flap. Let's develop that. And then we will schedule our power unit upgrade um, as soon as possible. I mean, we also get uh, from the factory, we get some uh, points generated as well. We have um, all our sponsor contracts are up pretty soon. We've got basically a month to run on two of them, which means we'll have to renew them before the season resumes. Presumably. Um, yeah, you can see how our finances have dropped dramatically since I upped the difficulty of the game. <laughs> um, but we've made some good inroads in improving our factory. Uh, in terms of drivers, Mick Schumacher has already gained one point to his skill level. Uh, we'll come back to the driver market during the season break and see if anyone's uh, done the old switcheroo. Um, we're going to be taking a penalty at the next Grand Prix. Let me make sure which track we're on next. Spa. Yeah, do you know, I'm going to take the penalty at Spa. Um, and we'll just start from the back at Spa. Um, it's a long lap. It's a There's good places to overtake, actually, and I'm quite good at Spa. So um, let's do it. I'm also going to order a... Oh, it used to let you order practice gearboxes, but it doesn't 
now. Uh, we could spend more money on the factory um, with a, a build time upgrade. Um, do you know I'm going to do it? It's risky. I know it's risky, but I'm going to do it. Because we have to keep pressing forward. Um, right, let's advance time. And we'll do an interview. Our powertrain upgrade is ready. And now we're going to go chat to Mr. Will Buxton. So it's time for an ethically sourced cola. Refreshing. Here we are in the HQ of our newest Formula One team. We've got an awful lot to talk about, so let's jump straight in. At the moment, you seem to be a solid mid-tier team. What do you think will take your team to the next level? That's actually a really good question. Um, durability will definitely help, but... Um, Aero. Uh, investment in your staff is so important in this sport, or they've really been putting in the hours in the simulator. Well, they haven't. He's only just started, so I'm going to say investment in your staff is important. <laughs> that was a loaded question. Um, if they can develop as fast as the team, then their position is safe. I think that's fair. Yes, of course it does, but I'm never going to admit to that on camera. Uh, that's a bug, isn't it? You're welcome, hot stuff. So now I'm excited to see what happens in the season break. Because the fact it's marked on the calendar tells me there's some event that's going to happen, aside from just being interviewed by uh, Sexy Will Buxton. Yes, I, I know. Um, but I really wanted a golden statue of myself that slowly rotates or it always faces the sun. And I'm the one who signs the checks, so you can just go swivel. You say that, let's find out. Oh, we've got some income already. Um, and there we go. We've now got our powertrain upgrade on the go as well. Excellent. Um, we're very close. Um, to finishing our first level upgrades for aerodynamics and powertrain um, we started the season with um, a level 1 upgraded chassis department already um, and we already have a spec 1 personnel section um, marketing might be worth investing in and durability at some point but um, for now powertrain and aerodynamics are super important I think um, we're going to take a huge grid penalty at SPA and we have seven day seven days left on our DSB optics contract, fourteen days on the Avolo contract, um thirty-five days on the pay night contract. So um hopefully we can pull in some nice sponsors to replace them if we have to replace them. But first we have a Belgian Grand Prix to go to. And um I'm going to not run qualifying and instead I'm sorry I'm going to make you sit through a practice program because I want some more development points. Actually no, no I don't. I mean I want the points I just can't be asked doing the practice. I think I'd mind less if the practice programs were more varied but it's the same five every time and even though it powers a core mechanic of the game, it feels like busy work after a bit. 
once you've done like three or four weekends with a practice program, you just realize it's just extending your play time. And the difference in points you get between simulating it and actually doing it is not huge. Um, it can be 250 points or so um, if you do all the little bonus whatnot really. So, meh. So, simulate session. I'm going to do just enough uh, in qualifying then, because I'm not running practice, to out-qualify Mick Schumacher, hopefully, um, on paper. I know the penalties will push me to the back, but if the game works like previous games, um, it takes the result in qualifying regardless of penalties as a deciding factor. Plus, we've got a rivalry that we still have to try and beat. So if by some chance I can out-qualify Pierre Gasly, which would be nothing short of a miracle at this point... Um, then that would be helpful. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't think I've lost a rivalry in one of these games before, so I'm interested to see what happens when I do. Um, but all in all, I'm just happy to have an upgraded and fresh power unit for both Spa and Monza, and then it'll be knackered by Singapore, but Singapore's not a power circuit, and we can then consider taking a penalty after Singapore. That may get us... To the last leg of the season we may end up taking another penalty in brazil or uh, america i don't know it depends how much wear we put on it what's in the message board does he have some weather for me overcast in the race sunny in qualifying so we don't have to worry about um sticking any more downforce on the car these upgrades should put us back in front of Haas and on the tail of Alfa Romeo but Haas will also be performing upgrades so what do you think of this one? Um, I know I said I would invest in durability I know I should but um, I'd really like to lift the car up to be a little bit more competitive sooner and patching the reliability later. Um, I've completely changed my management philosophy since starting this playthrough. But um, I, to be honest, it's kind of like real F1, right? Because very few teams in our position would pursue reliability. I think the only one I can think of was Manor. Um, HRT didn't really update their car either, but that's because they had no money. Um, but most teams strive for the performance and then address the reliability later in the hope that an unreliable part doesn't fail um, immediately and so allows them the performance advantage um, and that's exactly what we're doing Right, obviously going out on the softs, uh, no point in not doing that. I'm not going to take the standard default setup, I'm going to take the one with less downforce. Um, I think that will, um, it may make Eau Rouge a little bit more bum clenchy, but um, I'm fine with that. Let's see what we can do. I'll sleep a little bit there. I love this circuit so much. It's another one where you can just get into a real flow with it and it feels it just feels good. The only reason I didn't go to um, full top speed in the setup from default setups and I know I need to spend more time working on setups. I've already started actually in my other playthrough. I've got some for the first five rounds now. Um, but it's because uh, I didn't want when I'm on worn tires to be spinning out at the top of the hill. Oh yeah, because you're getting ready, right? 
Um, when the when the stream fell apart yesterday, I was going to ask you when. Let me know your stint times because I want to come along and watch. I want I want to see what you're doing. I have actually thought about opening an iRacing account and and trying to do a bit more there, but. I just don't know if I have the time to dedicate to it, really. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, you know, at, at least I'd like to, to get some updates on your progress. Um, but, of course, I wish you the very best of luck, and I hope you have a lot of fun doing it as well. Um, I, I am impressed that you're doing it, because um, I certainly don't have the endurance to, um, to be doing that sort of thing. Okay, ahead of Magnussen and Schumacher behind Raikkonen, that's pretty much par for the course. Ah, uh, I shall be thinking of you, mate. Um, I will be streaming tomorrow, but only in the morning, not in the evening. I've got a busy evening tomorrow, so... Um, I will, as far as I am able, find a way to check in on your progress during that stint. And yeah, I wish you the very, very best of luck, man. I, I, I hope it goes very, very well. I'm sure it will. What car are you driving? Oh, a 488. You know, though, I have to say, I never had you down as a Ferrari man. I don't know why. I didn't have you down as a Ferrari man. I think that's true of a lot of motorsport fans though. I think like we were talking yesterday, there's a certain there's a certain quality that Ferrari has that that means even if you're not a, a heart on the sleeve fan, you still have um, a measure of respect and reverence for the the mark as a whole. It's kind of how I feel about Porsche. I've never been a Porsche fan at all. I can respect what they do. But I've never, I've never been the kind of person who, um, you know, my dream car is a Porsche. And what we discovered in my old job actually is, you can usually divide people into Porsche people or Ferrari people. You're a man of good taste. You might have good taste. Do you know when I was younger though, um, I'm like my dad in this regard because I I always tend to develop a fondness for, like in F1 it's for the underdog least supported teams and with cars I always like the the little the sort of weird options. Um, so I mentioned yesterday, you know, my dad would only buy Saabs. Um, and, you know, Saab's quite a big name, but it's still kind of a niche that not many people find themselves falling into, right? And um, when I was quite a bit younger, for a while, my absolute dream car was a Spyker C8 um, because I loved how mad it was. <laughs> yeah, I think there is a culty quality to it, you're right. I'm glad, I'm glad um, you put an L in that word and not an M, because on my screen it broke the word in half and I was like, where is he going with this? <laughs> Currently, um, we are ahead of Lando Norris and Esteban Ocon. 
Um, I may have accidentally qualified for a, another session that I didn't want to be in. Um, come on, set, out qualify me, you peasant. They didn't, <laughs> but it does help with my uh, marketability and XP to qualify well, even if I get a, a nudge to the back. Yeah, sorry, I accidentally made it into Q2. I, my sincere and deep apologies. <laughs> I didn't mean to be competent. It won't happen again, I promise. Right. I'll skip on to the last five minutes. I'll do another lap. You never know. Maybe we qualify P10 again. I do no laps or one flying lap in, in um, Q3 and maybe out qualify Gasly on paper and um, try and recover some ground in our rivalry that I'm gradually losing control of. Let's see what we can do. The car definitely feels better here. Um, go on, what's he doing, that degenerate? He probably hasn't unlocked it yet, mate. That'll be what it is. Um, because for me it's locked, and I guess it's locked for him. But I, I'm almost 100% certain that as soon as it's unlocked, that'll be his, that'll be his weapon of choice. Is he doing Minardi with Revival or is he doing his sim racing team? As it, you know, you can tell because if the car's pink and yellow, then it's his team. A distinctly Simon car, okay. It's, it's a pair of colours that have no business being anywhere near each other. <laughs> but he just loves the combination. It's part of what makes him him. As deranged and unhinged as he undoubtedly is. Um, is, he, is he called it Simtech? The sim could be short for Simon, to be fair. So it's like Simon Tech. <laughs> Hold on, does that mean he has a purple car? Is he stealing my... Is he stealing my colour scheme? Because then I will have words. He told me he was going to do a Minardi revival. And uh, he was undecided on whether he was... Going for the black, white, and green colour scheme, or the midnight blue and yellow, or, or what? Traitor. I know what it is. He's seen the pictures of my car on Instagram, and he's gone, Ooh, do you know, purple does look nice. And now he's contrived a reason to copy it. For shame. <laughs> Just enough to out-qualify Gasly. I'm going to stay out because uh, maybe Gasly. If we don't get into tenth or higher, we won't. Or is Gasly still in the pit? Give it your best shot. I do think he'll love this game, though. Um, although when the physics feel like this, I tend to be faster, and 99% of the time he's faster. So. He may, he may like it in single player and hate it when he's uh, doing the podcast. Yeah, of course, please, please. I'm going to watch it regardless because um, we have to support each other. That's surprising. That is genuinely surprising because I would have thought he'd go um, Nobuhara Matashita or Louis Delatraz. I'm surprised... 
I'm surprised he picked King, but to be honest, the reason... Oh, actually, I know why he hasn't picked Louis Deltraz. It's because um, you don't get free choice at the start. You get like a... You have to pick from drivers that are interested in you, and um, presumably the people he wanted were were not interested. Fucking idiot. So, yeah, that'll be the logic. But if he doesn't hire Louis Delatraz mid-season, then, then someone has abducted Simon and replaced him with a faulty robotic replica. Oh, his king will perform better than my king. It, it goes without saying. He gets all the luck. I probably had a defective king. Please tell me that I outqualified Gasly. No, I didn't. Shit. I had the pace, but I screwed it up twice. Shit, yeah. How far away was I? Oh, a long way. Oh, no. No, a tenth and change. Okay, it could be worse. But that makes me angrier because it means I did mess it up on the, um, the corner complex. Bugger. Still, I'm encouraged by our pace generally. If you're in his chat, please say hi from me and tell him I love him and he's not forgotten. Oh shit, none of those guys because I can't beat them. No comment. <laughs> I totally get you. That's why I consider that a privilege, mate. It's always nice to have a bit of chat going on. Um, yeah, durability. I'm going to blame everything on durability now because I'm not investing in it. <laughs> so, so they can't do right for doing wrong. I'm not giving a cheeky hello. He looks like he's getting good viewing numbers though, so right on. Good boy. Right. Race time. Game face. It's serious now. Um, we start from the back, but we definitely have to get ahead of our teammate. And um, I'll go long again on the first stint. And it feels like we have some pace, so maybe we can, um, maybe we can achieve something. Has his stream gone down? Because I'm, I was just seeing a black screen there while I was uh, sending him flirtatious messages. As for how bad it is, that'll depend on what the other drivers get. I, I don't think anybody has a penalty as bad as our penalty, Jeff. Ah, <laughs> cursed is itchy nose. Will I ever be free from its wretchedness? I have, I have a colleague at work who spent the entire day texting me pictures of themselves hanging out in a jacuzzi in the south of France. And I'm still a little bit caught up about it. It takes a monumental bastard to spend the day doing that. He kissed me hell. Oh, God bless him. Moi. We're 
Belgium once again for today's round of the Formula One World Champions. Let's see where everyone's starting, shall we? Great Ayrton and Senna won six times. And in 2019, Charles Leclerc became the first driver to take their maiden win here since Michael Schumacher in 1992. So here we are once again, ready to go racing through the Ardane Forest. 4.35 miles. What did we do? <laughs> Have we done something unintentionally hilarious? <laughs> this not only one of the most exciting circuits on the calendar oh. but one that makes for some consistently high quality racing as well simply put it there really is no place quite like spa anthony davidson is here once again for today's grand prix now let's talk about charles leclerc that was a great win in the last race can they keep that momentum going this weekend there are never any guarantees in this business but certainly the performance last time out would have boosted their confidence coming into this one. i have to say uh, mercedes are running away with it order for today's exciting race lewis hamilton lines up on pole position and valtteri bottas Kels, please. Up alongside looking at the rest of today's grid we have car signs on fire since the mid of the season Daniel isn't he Kvyat and norris and Kvyat as well Gasly, Ocon, and sebastian Vettel. they've taken a grid penalty Giovinazzi, oh both Perez, ferraris with a penalty Perez, and ricardo raikkonen albon kevin magnuson and mick schumacher rojan russell latifi and williams that's it then it's time to go <laughs> massive grid penalty <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm definitely a, a plus 200 places on the grid kind of guy. It's my own fault for picking Honda. I'm going to blame Honda. Take the McLaren route. Blame all my own incompetence on Honda. It wasn't me. It was the Japanese. Do you know, Cody's promised to fix the loading time issue, but they clearly haven't. This will be why I was seeing a black screen on Simon's stream. We'll be in loading purgatory. Right. Definitely starting on the harder tyre. I'm sure the game will tell me that it's slower. But we have some catching up to do. Because um, we are obviously out of position. And we've got some pace. We're not hugely out of position. But, but we are nevertheless out of position. Um, obviously puts us slower on the... On the Actually, we're going to spend longer on the faster tyre, so ultimately we'll have good um, second stint pace. Um, but if we can make some gains on the first stint, then hopefully um, we'll be in some clear air when we come out of the pits. That would be spectacularly sexy. I see you, Schumacher. Don't think I don't see you. I love that Williams delivery, I really do. Oh, Latifi! You bastard! <laughs> you absolute bastard! Engine off, engine off! Do we keep that as a DNF or do I flash back? Who even was that? It looked like a horse. Was it Grosjean? Actually, I think that was Magnussen, wasn't it? Right. I want to see what I was doing. Spa 98 did get a flashback. Right, it's... Because I didn't think I was turning. I just want to check to see if it's me being an incompetent dickhole or... It's kind of both of us, we're just sort of drifting towards each other, aren't we? Although I would say he's moving more than I am. So yeah, we, we lock wheels and then obviously I try to hold it but he just pushes me all the way around but all he does is drive himself into the barrier and he takes out a Williams at the same time. Oh, it's a tangled web we weave. That was a bit cleaner from both of us. I think we've learned our lesson. Now we've uh, final destination each other. <laughs> Oh, 
Don't start the race, I've seen the future. Keep pushing, let's capitalize on that first lap. Um, I was braking exactly where I was supposed to then, and the car just did not stop. It's not very encouraging, is it? <laughs> Normally when I do something like that, it means I wasn't paying attention and I missed my braking point, but... Son of a bitch. And this time, um, I broke a little too early. Yeah, <laughs> this really is the horse experience. It's like a, it's like a fairground attraction. Dare you ride the horse experience? Experience spectacular collisions under the safety car for no conceivable reason. Laugh as your friends and family spin at low speed and blame a Swedish person who's not even there. Actually, it would make a good a good funfair ride. You could sell the t-shirts sell themselves, or the Marcus Ericsson puns. Danny Rick almost losing it there. Of course I exceed track limits, the bastard squeezed me off. Some hot and spicy racing action for you today. Tell you what though, Latifi, that was a godlike start. I mean obviously the car doesn't have the pace to keep it up, but... Or... Oh. I spun the real wheels. If I hadn't had done, I would have got both of them then. I could feel it in the waters. Right, I'm not going to try and overtake. Oh, I tell a lie. I am. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. <laughs> but we didn't hit each other. At no point have we made contact. This is... Good job. Nice overtake. It was a nice overtake. Not many of those when you're riding on board with me. Usually it's a kind of overtake where you sort of kick the door down and elbow your way through. <laughs> Damn the consequences. We're doing some racing. For the first time in three rounds, we're doing some actual racing. I wonder if we get any bonus tasks in Japan, because uh, in the last game they had, um, they'd recorded the Jeff voiceover saying, you know, this is our engine supplier's home Grand Prix, so please give us a good result. But there was no game mechanic, mechanic attached to that. I wonder if this time there is. That would be fun. Oh, God, was, if I can finish this lap still within a second of uh, Ricardo, that would be chef's kiss, beautiful, because I'll get the Durs, and there's an Alfa Romeo ahead of him that I think I could have, um, so I'll be on the fast tyre. Ahead of them, though, is Vettel. Got the Durs. Fastest sector one. We're killing it. Obviously gone silent now because I'm feeling competitive. I balls that corner up before I got anywhere near it. I'm sure Beetlejuice, you will have seen exactly what I did wrong. Come on, keep keep your head on, because we can get Daniel Ricardo. We can do it. I believe in us. 
Come on, scrappy little car made of pieces of straw. Yeah, hitting the apexes would be a start, but you, you obviously will have seen why I couldn't hit the apexes, right? Because um, I, I, for some reason, completely unbeknownst to myself, drove off the racing line and entered the corner from the complete wrong angle. So the only way I could possibly have hit the apexes was to essentially come to a standstill. <laughs> This is it, this is the one. Come on little battery, hold out. Just this once, please. Uh, rain isn't forecast, but the forecast is not 100% guaranteed, so... It would be nice to have a changeable race, wouldn't it? Although it would deny me my glory run on the uh, soft tyres. I have to start braking earlier for that corner because um, the car just doesn't stop where I think it's going to. Specifically it, that corner though. Oh, someone's going to retire it seems. Right, come on Ben, remember where the apexes are, you know what an apex is. It's the pointy bit of the corner. And then you overtake Daniel Ricardo. you know who he is. Farms kangaroos. Sing songs about his testicles for some reason. Mick's dropped out of the race. Oh no, Mick Schumacher, DNF. Oh, now I don't, now I'm not happy about that yellow flag. Although it's fine, fuck him, he wasn't going to score points anyway. Gretchen's just bastard. Window open. Let's box this lab. Twat. Sorry. <clears throat> I was reading your message. I would I too would love a Belgium night race. Not so much that I'd crash into the back of Daniel Ricardo, but I would love it. I mean th looking at it though, they'd have to install a lot more lighting of course, but it would look spectacular, wouldn't it? because of the verticality of the track. Actually, that could look pretty, pretty special, couldn't it? But if we ever go down the route of um, closed cockpits, um, similar to IndyCar, for example, then there's no reason why you couldn't actually fit headlights somewhere. I mean, to be honest, they could probably fit them at the at the uh, top of the side pods anyway, you know, like built into the the rim on the upper edge of the um, the intake. Of course, the only problem you'd have then is when Grosjean inevitably spins it on the apex of a corner. Uh, he'll be blinding everyone behind him. Oh shit, I was reading your message and went off the track. I'm on the heart of the tyre, but I'm the first to pit. Are you okay? <laughs> I wasn't even in control of the car. <laughs> the AI takes over. Yeah, I mean that's probably another another thing as well. Um, because at Singapore, you know, it's lit up like a Christmas tree, so the, the marshals have good visibility anyway. It's probably hard or prohibitively expensive to do that somewhere like Spa. Uh, it's a long way down to the bottom garage. I wonder if they move our pit garage depending on our constructor's uh, championship position. That would be a nice touch. I mean, it, it can't be hard to implement a feature like that.
Right, let's see if I can focus again now, because um, I've undone a lot of my own good work there. I had really good pace for a while, and I started making silly mistakes. And to be fair, most of my driving is just silly mistakes strung together by talking about those silly mistakes. But I do feel at least once I should try and be competent, just to see if I like it. Although it might be a gateway drug that leads me on to, you know, streaming other games and trying to play them properly. One should us to think. How's Simon doing in Bahrain? Bet he's on a fucking podium, isn't he? The swine. All those nice things I said about him before, I take them back. Oh, did he DNF? Oh, that's so Simon. No, not the floppy head Italian, not again. to lock some wheels. <laughs> that was the most ridiculous moment ever. <laughs> that has to be the most slapstick, ridiculous corner entry of all time. Hey, it wasn't my fault. I was faster than all those bitches. They were just weaving, trying to get round each other as if I wasn't the dominant force. Look at that, see I was purple sector one. De facto fastest. King of the hill. Born identity. Did wipe out my battery trying to do that stupid uh, stunt though. No, I mean, I had to, I had to, in the words of Danny Rick, I had to lick the stamp and stand it there, mate, because I don't think I will ever have an opportunity like that again. <laughs> Especially when I don't press the correct button to break. This is why I'm incompetent. I mean, well, it's one of many reasons why I'm incompetent. That I have a habit of occasionally pressing the complete wrong button. When really, I'm only using three control inputs at any one time. Who's this coming out of the pits? We've got Stroll and someone else up ahead. See, like now as well, these guys coming out of the pits, the cold tyres, right? This is my best chance to get by them. And I might look into some points. Yeah, you'd think, right? I mean, the physics is there because you get games with really um, quite advanced damage now. You'd think that would be in there, but... My car will not stop for that corner. No matter, I'm, I'm braking earlier and earlier, and it will not stop. It just, it just seems to... Fucking hell. It just seems to be a free spirit. It, it, it goes where the heart wants. See what I mean? This time I was ready for it, but I, mean, I could try downshifting more aggressively, but I'm trying not to blow up the engine for once.
Oh. I'm sorry, Charles. That, that was... Well, actually, I don't know if it was my fault, actually, because I was taking the racing line. But let's assume that it was and give you another try. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe we just have the same brake supplier as Haas. And that's the reason why. But take here, look. Look how quickly it stopped there. And it's not like I'm pressing the brakes to any different degree. It's just that one corner where consistently the car o overruns itself. Um, so I'm just going to have to brake even earlier than I think. Because, I mean, the, the corner indicators you get in the game are always just an indicator anyway. They're not the best place to break, by any means. Being showered in sparks. Max Verstappen! <laughs> It was right. bad. Let me know you're all right. But I had I had to try. I had to try. I had to try. Right, let's try another Max Verstappen. Do you know what? I've had I've had a really good season this year for not Let me let me see if I can start being professional again for a minute. I'm just I'm just getting frustrated, I think, because uh I've been having some difficulties with the car. But let's see if I can manage the remaining two laps without making a twat of myself. So look at that Perez just moving over politely for Charles Leclerc as if that would have ever happen in real life. Um I don't know. I mean, the thing is, I'm going to end up playing this game all night anyway. But yeah, maybe maybe I should and uh, come back tomorrow morning when I'm a bit fresher. There's three laps of fuel remaining. Da -da 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 -da. Or go online and yeah, make make a menace of myself in the lobby. To be fair though, I've, I've been priding myself on, on doing my absolute best in the multiplayer, so I only go when I know I'm not going to be disturbed, and um, when I'm in the right frame of mind, where I'm cool and calm and I'm not going to... I'm, I'm super careful in the multiplayer, like, so careful that actually it damages my competitiveness, because I'll back out, just because I don't trust the other guy not to pinch me and for us both to spin out. Because honestly, to, to get a penalty, a penalty, a podium. Sorry, I'm more familiar with saying penalty because I get those far more often. Um, yeah. Um, but to get a podium in, in multiplayer, all you have to do really is keep it on the track. Because so many people get too aggressive and spin, and others get too aggressive in their overtakes, and they take each other out, and then you just cruise on by and pick up the pieces. And as long as they're not really petty individuals, um, then, you know, if they're racing somewhat cleanly, then they'll let you through because they've got no front wing or whatever. But I have already encountered my first two people who will deliberately swerve to try and take you out, and will brake check you on um, corner exit and stuff. But it's funny, right, that I'm far more alert and able to avoid running into them than I am the AI. And I think it's because even though I don't totally trust the AI, I'm, a, I'm sort of at least somewhat pre familiar with them. They're predictable to a certain degree. So I can just chat with you guys and sort of turn my brain off a little bit. And then occasionally it catches me out and I just sort of cruise into the back of Daniel Ricciardo. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, Wodge, that the lobbies I've played so far have been a million times better than, than my experiences in the last few years. But I put that down to the fact that I was playing only against other people who had 
paid the maximum amount of money possible to get the game early. Um, so it was going to be a mixture of like hardcore enthusiasts and impulsive, petulant children and fuck's sake. And um, and I guess I just got some of the impulsive, petulant children um, because it was. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really going to have to start being more careful. I promise I will. Um, see there. I just... I... This corner and the one it won't stop at, I just instinctually feel like the car will stop if I break there. It'll stop in time, but it, it just doesn't seem to. Um, and it's more of a problem when the car in front of me is closely following another car, because I guess they're braking early as well. So my normal braking point pulls up short. You know what I mean? And, and then you sort of end up... Uh, I don't know if the multiplayer is cross-platform, actually. The last game wasn't, so I don't think that it is. Which is a shame, really, but... I mean, you get healthy communities on all three platforms, so... There's always someone to play against. Um, what I don't like, though, is that the, the ranked lobby... There's only two options. Um, Five-lap race or 25% race. Because I do enjoy an occasional, like, you know, maybe I've got an afternoon off, I'm feeling fresh and energised, and it's fun doing, like, a 50 or 100% race occasionally. Um, and I had a really good one on 2017 or 2018, where there was me and a German guy, and we were on opposing pit strategies, and we'd always find each other on track at different points in the stint, and we had some really great racing. Um, he's still on my friends list. I've never spoken to him si since, though, but, like, super good fun. And I enjoyed playing the strategy game with him over over the course of a race. And it, it was funny trying to watch us second-guess each other, you know, coming in early or trying to run a little bit longer. Um, but you don't have that in the ranked lobby, so you have to set up, like, a specific league. And then it's a league. It's not even, like, a one-off race, necessarily. No points again, no point. But I'm driver of the day, which I don't deserve at all. It's because all the stuff that disqualifies me is no longer canon because I flashbacked it. I will be better in Monza. Well, generally, yeah, because because um, obviously to get a, even a, a medium grade one, you're spending quite a bit of money. I mean, I spent over two hundred euros, and my um, my wheel's nothing fancy, do you know what I mean? It's not spectacular or anything. Um, and I don't have a proper setup. I don't have a racing seat. Um, maybe I should have one, to be honest. Like, once I start streaming with the capture card and I need, like, a proper little studio corner, if you will, um, maybe I'll get one then. Because the chair I'm in now is really uncomfortable. I actually have a really comfortable office chair through there, but... <laughs> yeah, they, they will, right? There was a big esports boom, particularly in, in lockdown. Um, and then the F1 drivers kind of fueled the fire. So uh, it, do, it makes total sense to me that people will have to pay a lot more for um, for their wheels. Um, more loading screen shenanigans. I'm really hoping the patch fixes that. I'm going to take a sneaky peek at what Simon's doing. It's time to see how this result affects the drivers' championship. It's a great result for Lewis Hamilton, who moves further ahead at the top of the table. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? I have to give it to Williams. They pushed and pushed and found some fantastic performance. Nice. It's just a pleasure to watch. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the constructors' championship. That should help our um, our marketability a bit. Um, You're welcome to my thoughts, what's left of them. Uh, I overstepped and got punished, yes. You really cut your way through the field today. What's your strategy? Uh, to fail several times, rather spectacularly, and then reverse time using a magic power that only I possess, and then pretend the whole thing didn't happen, and keep doing it until I get it right, and then I end up ahead of the guy uh, in front of me.
you underestimated the power of the <laughs> the power of the flashback button. But but my efforts now will be uh, on trying to make sure I don't have a race that sloppy again. And we got at least one of our bonuses. So that brings in a cool quarter of a million nearly. Um, I've got some damage deductions, uh, unsurprisingly. Sadly, Mick Schumacher got a DNF, so we we don't know if he would have got more out of the car as well than he got in qualifying. Um, but I'm hoping now we get a time window that we can boost his stats a little bit. And um, I might end up having to keep him at least for the first half of next year. Yeah, I mean, I imagine if they started deducting it from Grosjean's salary, then... Um, <laughs> then maybe he'd be more careful. Maybe they do. Okay, we have a new sponsor window and we have to adjust to the new normal. Um, complete a weekend without colliding with another vehicle. <laughs> it's never going to happen. Um, overtake five different drivers. Achieve a faster slap. Top 10 finish. Out qualify your rival. I might have to go back to this, um, but again, it's a nice German compound word, which I enjoy. What else we got? Score more points in the team directly above you. Um, achieve and hold first position. Um, that is a really, really good question because it's so hard to, to know. Um, because if his plan is to quit the sport in 2022, which I think it is, then there's not really any reason to sign someone else. But also, he has gone on record saying that they'd like a pay driver. Um, and so, yeah, maybe maybe not. Qualifying P15 or better, that's, that's something that actually feels like a, a challenge, um, given where we're at now. And it's a nice sponsor logo. So let's sign with them, shall we? Um, yeah, the problem is I don't think he'll be able to tempt Ericsson back from IndyCar. He's having the time of his fucking life over there. I'm a big Marcus Ericsson fan, actually. I think he did quite a bit of giant killing in his stint in, in F1. And it's quite impressive. Um... And he's doing really well in IndyCar. He's he's been getting some really good results, um, and he's at a good team now as well, a very reputable team. So I, I it'd be very hard to bring him back. I think. Um, okay, so all we've got to do now is stick our sponsor on our livery. Let's see where we've got space. Wow, that's super low res. Where have all the other sponsors gone? Okay, uh, I'm going to replace uh, the Chinese government as our main sponsor. I'm going to give it to Opaque because I like the logo. Uh, sponsor slot two, I will give to Paynight. Three, I will give to Avolo. Yes, I'm, I, I, I'm sure it will not. They can have the rear wing. Uh, yes, I don't know what it means, but the game tells you it's they're called Jing Shen, um, which I presume means something to someone. <laughs> crashy, crashy. <laughs> what do we reckon? Does that look a bit nicer? <laughs> Can I show it for short again? Uh, you mean you want to look at it close up? Jing Shan in the top left corner. Presumably it's just a phonetic description. I, I don't know if it actually means anything. I actually, can I say, I like that configuration of sponsors way more than 
the bullshit we had before. Um, I like that. I hope you guys agree. But that looks much better, in my humble opinion. Okay. Onwards and upwards, my friends. Uh, next up, Italian Grand Prix. We have two days. Um, oh, look at you with your skills being cultured. There's no room for that here. You're not dining with the Queen. I love Monza. I know we said we'd stop. I'm doing it. Um, but by no means feel obligated to stick around while I do, but um, I feel I deserve a bit of a bit of Monza fun after that. Well, we're off in the long grass here. What's this? Is this where your name comes from? I've, I've never understood how to pronounce it, actually. I don't even know if calling you Wodge is technically a good thing. I'm just pronouncing the first uh, syllable in my lame northern accent and hoping that it sticks. You must love Monza Beetlejuice, you must. It's one of those very special places. And there's a time in every young man's life when he and his car love each other very much that they must go to Italy and consummate the relationship at Monza. It's the circle of life, my friend. It's just nature taking its course. Oh. I was supposed to take the recycling out to the bin and I didn't. Um, you don't need to know that information. Um, I'm just internally chastising myself for being a lazy fuck. Oh, actually, that's a good point. Yeah. If there was a part, a part of the track I'd remove, it would be that. <laughs> um, but for safety reasons in real life, I understand it has to be there. Um, but I would remove it if I could. Um, that said, um, if you can position yourself well enough, um, it's the best overtaking point, I think. Um... Singing some show tunes for you. You get it all here. I'm, I'm a versatile entertainer. I don't know what's going on on Simon's stream. I've got it open on my phone just so I can check in occasionally what he's doing. Uh, I just see the last comment is ran out of talent. And I, I have to sort of, <laughs> you know, laugh to myself. Ah, well, he's running 20th at the moment, but he's no longer at Bahrain from what I saw. We have more R&D points to spend. Um, can we... Yeah, we can't do there. We can't do there, so we have to do the chassis. Um, that's quite a big upgrade. That's a less big upgrade. That's an even bigger upgrade. Engine cover weight reduction. Yeah, why not? Let's put the car on a diet. Let's see what we can do. Right. Um, we're not joint streaming at the moment. Um, I would have liked to actually, um, but he's got his um, his partner staying with him, and he doesn't know how long he'll be able to get away streaming before his partner becomes upset with him. So, because we couldn't plan anything. Um, it just seemed easier to do our own thing independently and um, we may stream together at some point, probably Sunday, because um, we're going to do a, a wheel stream uh, is, is the idea to see if we can learn to use our wheels. And then obviously a week tomorrow the failcast starts for season 11. I'm feeling old. Season 11. Um, well, he told me... His partner won't see this. He told me off the record um, 
that uh, <laughs> that um, he's happy. He was happy that his um, partner was coming to see him because they haven't seen each other in a few weeks. Um, but that inside, he was thinking, you know, could you come after the F one? Uh, <laughs> And they've been trying to like, he's been trying to figure out the best way to sort of manoeuvre things so he can watch the Grand Prix, play the game and spend enough time with his partner to not be in trouble because his partner doesn't like Formula One. Um, so he has my sympathies um, because that is a difficult balancing act. <laughs> Well, see, that's what I would have said. Um, but I suppose if the other person doesn't like Formula One, um, it's a tricky sell. But, I mean, I honestly believe anyone can get into Formula One. And um, some people I know who are really not motorsport types have really got into it because of um, the Netflix series. And I know... To some extent, the Netflix series is kind of a false proposition, right? Because it's promising you a level of action and intensity that doesn't actually happen. Um, but once you get invested in, in the people inside the sport, um, I think that goes a long way. And seeing behind the scenes and seeing how hard everyone works and how difficult it is to achieve things, um, yeah, I think it's done a lot of good for the sport. And um, I know I'm showing my age here, but I mean, I'm sure there were women who followed um, F1 back in the 90s and so on. I, I, I have no doubt there were, but certainly within my family, um, the men liked Formula One, the women could not care less and would like leave the room or go do something else. But that's totally different now. I mean, my sister watched that documentary and now she's quite happy to sit and watch a race. Um, so it's done a lot of good for the sport and a lot of good for widening up the audience. <laughs> um, I imagine every, any woman who was alive in the 70s knows, how, uh, knows who James Hunt was. And the, the, the thing is, I don't know how it is... Um, oh, hey, Kate Knight. How are you doing, mate? It's good to see you. Um, but I don't know how it is where where all you guys um, are, but in Britain, Formula One's kind of like an institution to a certain extent, because the races in the 90s would always be shown around the time you'd have your Sunday dinner and you'd traditionally be with your family, and it would just sort of be on the TV religiously. Um, and I think part of that was like the Mansell Damon Hill effect, but also it was the timing that the coverage was always on. And my childhood memories of Sunday roast dinner, it's all F1. It's all F1. We are a second off Lewis Hamilton's time, but I tell you what, this is a lot faster than we have been. Our best lap so far is a 1 minute 22.7. Yeah, I mean, it used to have to be on free to air television in Britain, but um, then it, it's like protected status was removed if you will uh, so now the only thing protected is um, the Olympics and um, the national football teams so when England play or Scotland play it has to it has to by law um, be on free to air television uh, I, don't, I think the FA Cup final is covered but not the FA Cup um, itself the final has to be free to air as well I think or at least it used to be. It may no longer be the case. I, you know, I was quite happy with where we were until I realised that most people haven't actually put in a time, which is why we were so high. And uh, Giovinazzi is faster than us. So, going to have to go get... Yeah! That's it, man. Sunday Grandstand. Des Lynham. Oh, good. I have put fresh tyres on, so I'm not, I'm not a total idiot. Yeah, I, I miss him and his cheeky moustache. And of course, Murray Walker. Um, I, I often feel sorry for any F1 fans who never got to experience full throttle Murray Walker as like the voice of their Sunday afternoon. 
He did. He did. Um, but it's a tangled web we weave, mate. Right, uh, another quality run. Let's see if we can get out of Q1. It would it would be nice, and I do love our new livery. Yeah, and I was so happy, um, particularly living in Germany, when F1 announced F1 TV Pro, because um, German coverage is by far the worst I've ever seen. Because it's all adverts, and the commentators are really bad. Um, but also, I was always willing to pay to watch uh, Sky's coverage, it just wasn't possible. They wouldn't sell it to me because of regional licensing laws. So when F1 said we're going to have our own streaming service and we're going to put F1 documentaries and stuff on there, then I was like, yeah, I'm all in. But it, it never works. It's always broken and, and it stutters. And they've been trying to do it for three years and it's never got any better. So I'm kind of in this purgatory at the moment where it's my only good option. Of course you can live with me, mate. If you can deal with me being as clumsy in real life as I am on the circuit. Uh, well, I appreciate you trying to slow down whichever racing point that was, but you did nothing but ruin my lap and drive me into a gravel trap, so... Um... Actually, that's a lie. I'm not that clumsy in real life. Um, I'm not that bad. That said, my apartment is hotter than the sun, and not in the sexy way. Um, I got almost no sleep last night. It was just, it was far too hot, and even opening the windows. And I've got a little aircon unit that's not really aircon because it runs off USB power, so basically it's a fan. But it did, it did nap all, to the surprise of no one. Um, but I can't seem to get the heat out of the apartment. It's been raining all day. The sun hasn't really been out, and it's still like the same temperature it's been for a week. It's alright mate, half of Berlin doesn't speak any German. You'll be fine. It will not hold you back at all. It will not hold you back in the slightest. <laughs> I mean, my German could and arguably should be better, but I can deal with the government, I can interview for a job, I can answer the phone. I can converse with people, totally fine. Uh, but there are people who've been here longer than me, people who've been here like 15 years. They can barely string a sentence together. It's, it's really bizarre. And honestly, it makes me a little uncomfortable because I kind of think you should make the effort. If you're gonna make the conscious decision, you should try at least a little bit. I mean, I'm an idiot. I'm, I have really bad language aptitude. Um, but, you know, I, I think you have to kind of make the effort. Um, just so at least you can have a chat down the pub. Um, but let me tell you a quick story before we go into Q2. And this is a celebratory story because I qualified in P2. And uh, Beetlejuice, um, because you are in some sense a German speaker, I think you will appreciate this. Um, when I first got here, I, um, I kept getting invited to dinner parties as like a mingle, like a social mingle. And the idea was to practice your German. And um, I went over to this stranger's house and they made a really nice meal and at the end they served a, like a walnut cake. Um, I couldn't tell it was walnut, it wasn't covered in walnuts, but when I bit into it, it tasted of nuts. And when they asked me if I was enjoying the cake, um, I, yeah, still on my first year mate, yeah, this is season one of my own team, pushing. Um, she asked me, are you enjoying the cake? And in English, I wanted to say to her, it's very nice, it's, it's very nutty. And the word for nutty in German is nussig. Um, but I said nuttig, which means slutty. Um, <laughs> I was like, it's a nice cake. It's filthy. It's very slutty. Um, <laughs> and um, actually... I felt really self-conscious after that um, and it made me a bit nervous about speaking German and just a few days later I was on the train platform at Potsdamer Platz and a German family approached me and the transport system in Berlin at the time at least was super confusing because 
you buy tickets and they print them out and then there's these little stamping machines. So you have to put it in the machine and it validates the ticket. But some tickets don't have to be validated because they've got the date pre-printed on them. Anyway, I was running late and my train was pulling in at the moment they stopped me and asked. And they asked me if they needed to validate their ticket. And because I didn't know which ticket they had, um, I wanted to say always, you know, just, just to be safe. So if they got a fine, it wouldn't be because of anything I'd told them. So I should have said Immer, but for some reason, the word that came to mind, and I blurted it out was for light. And when I got on the train, I realized um, that I'd said for light, which means maybe. <laughs> so they come up and said, do we need to stamp our ticket? I'd gone, maybe, and then fucked off on a train. <laughs> So my apologies to that family from Munich, um, at least they sounded like they were from Munich. Um, I'm only a dick by accident, but, but it happens. <laughs> uh, and you know, why not, let's go for the hat trick. And also the office I worked at, um, there was a, like a canteen nearby. We don't get them in Britain, it's not like the company canteen, it's like a, a special kind of restaurant where you know you go in you get a tray and it's like home style cooking and they, they serve your portions and people were always teasing me about my accent and because I never really left home much when I was a kid I wasn't even aware I had an accent it was only when I went to uh, to Glen Course um, when I was uh, in the stages of joining the army where people started taking the piss out of my accent that I realized I had one and I go up um, to, to get my food and they ask you uh, what you would like and um, I said to her he had again the currywurst bitter I would like the the curry currywurst the sausage and curry sauce and she screws her face up at me and goes aber we haben kein Kartoffeltasche um, <laughs> I can laugh about it now but at the time I was so offended because currywurst and kartoffeltasche, they do not sound remotely the same, even when I say them. But apparently my accent was so thick, that that's what she thought I said. And at this point I decided it was a conspiracy, like the whole of Germany was against me. It was, it was the universe targeting me specifically. And for that, after that, that hat trick of events, it took me a few years before I felt comfortable using my German again. Because uh, I had one or two other bad experiences because, I mean, Berlin's a very unfriendly city as well. And so, you know, if you go to a kebab stand late at night and you order and your accent makes you a little hard to understand. And there was like, huh, huh, huh. And in the end, you just revert to English. And then I live in the city centre. And if they hear your accent, even if you speak German to them in the store or wherever, uh, they'll respond to you in English because they think they're being helpful. And it just, it stunts your, your language learning. Perhaps we should get out there before it gets busy. <laughs> yeah, I can totally relate to it. A Geordie in Spain. I can't, I can't think of anything worse. <laughs> Maybe a Scouser in Spain. Um, poor bloke. My heart does go out to him, though, truly, because it, it, it's, it's a hard knock life, man. Um, and and the thing is, I never understood it. That's why I took it so personally, because um, when I was a, a kid going to college, like most people, um, what? Oh, I'm definitely going to have to get in on this. Mikasalo, yes, please. Uh, I, thank you, a Salo aficionado is definitely what I consider myself. Um, yeah, once I'm done here at some point, I'm definitely going to go and watch that stream. I need to find him on Twitch. And then one day, we will be friends. I will make it happen. One day, you'll see a picture on my Instagram of me and Mikasalo having a beer. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. That's my goal now. But yeah, I mean, when I was in college, um, I worked at a shop for a while, which, you know, is quite a common thing to do. And we got people coming in with really strong foreign accents. And like one, guy, one, one time a guy asked me, um, in a really difficult to understand way, um, if, if we had a sausage, which obviously you... As a native speaker, you can understand what he's trying to say. So, you know, sausage. Um, but Germans don't seem to have the same ability 
and I don't know if it's rude Berliners or if it's a quirk of, of being a native speaker of the language, I honestly don't understand. But no matter how thick someone's accent or how bad their pronunciation in English, um, I was 90% of the time able to discern exactly what they were saying um, with a bit of effort. Um, maybe Beetlejuice, you can weigh in on that. Yeah, he will. I mean, we'll be having a beer, but it won't be voluntarily. Uh, and off camera, his wife and children will be duct taped to a chair um, <laughs> uh, while we have our beer. And he tells me how it was to drive with Pedro de Mirza Arrows in 1998 in detail. For a second there, I read that as Mikasalo666 and thought he was going through an angsty teenage phase. What it should really be is xxx underscore mikasalo 66 underscore xxx. <laughs> Just like an ironic teenage girl handle. Just 30 seconds left in the session. Ah, bollocks. You've got a Lego Pedro Diniz. Why have I never been made aware of this? Where can I get a Lego Pedro Diniz? Did you make him yourself? Or was it like a Lego set? Sorry, sorry. I, I can't qualify under these co conditions. What? Oh, it's homemade. I was... I, I loved the idea for a second there that Lego had specifically made a Pedro Diniz playset. Ideally, when his um, Ligier exploded and caught fire. That, that, I would, that I would buy, like a Lego diorama of Pedro Diniz in an upside down flaming Ligier. Well actually, Lego have, um, on their website, um, they take suggestions for the next playset. Maybe if we can get enough of us together, we can suggest a Pedro Diniz playset. I don't have the audience or the gravitas to do it, but it would tickle me. Because um, there may be a Red Dwarf playset, um, because uh, people voted for, for Red, Red Dwarf. Yeah, do you know, I, uh, yeah, maybe when me and Mikasalo become best friends, which is obviously definitely going to happen, um, because I'm a delight. And uh, with his support, maybe, just maybe, we can get a... Uh, Pedro Diniz, Mikasalo, Arrows, Lego playset. And it should be spe specially engineered so that when it's complete and the child picks it up to go, Mum, look what I've built, the back end just falls off. Every time. Every time. It's probably quite hard, but maybe the heat from the hands of the child could loosen something. Um, you know, just a small warming in the surface of the material just to make sure it splits in half. Uh, the worst possible moment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the flammable, flammable Jos Verstappen playset. But like we said yesterday, it needs to be animatronic. So it needs to be like an RC car that at a certain point just stops, bursts into flames, and then the driver gets out and punches a woman in the face. The, the, the true Jos Verstappen experience. <laughs> Oh, it's a good job I don't have an audience, because I'd be sued to buggery. Yeah, me, me too, to be honest. I tickled myself with that. Oh, that was that was good. We need to make this a reality. The track is pretty quiet at the moment. Perhaps we should get out there and get a few laps in. Perhaps you should stop bossing me around, Jeff. It's very insecure on your part. I wonder if you had a difficult relationship with your father. Wow, some interesting names made it into uh, Q3, eh? Not least of all us, but um, we've got Stroll, Ocon and Giovinazzi who are not always uh, Q3 attendees. And this actually is the first time in Q3 for Giovinazzi. So, uh, well done indeed.
Yeah, <laughs> he went for cigarettes. Christmas Eve, 1972, never returned. <laughs> Just a note, send him to race engineer school. I, I have no idea, mate, but to, but to be honest, I'm, I'm really good at Monza. Um, since the, the 2016 version of the game. Um, I've won it almost every year in the podcast, so I don't know. There's, I think it's because it's an easy circuit. No, um, I've been turning the AI up pretty consistently and, and now um, we're close to 90, if not on 90. I, I forget exactly where I settled. I always turn it down for, um, for streaming because I have to do talking, but... Um, we started lower because normally when I was streaming in the past, it, I'd have it around um, 80 so that I could compete and, and like talk in real time and read chat at the same time. Um, but the game was immediately, it seemed to be far too easy. And it, I took a few rounds to get, um, to get used to it because I didn't want to make uh, a difficulty change um, just on the basis of one or two races um, because we actually had a really good car Our, the first version of the car was better than both the Haas and the Williams because of the way I answered the questions pre-season um, we had a, a, a really good chassis and um, I thought well okay maybe it is feasible that we could sneak into the points with a car like this if you know luck falls our way but then the first sort of five, six races actually turned out to be really strong. And then I turned up the difficulty two or three times. Um, I didn't even realize I was third. That's mad. Um, I see I did that without even paying attention. And now I've gone purple in sector one, so I'm gonna have to finish the lap and start on warm tires. It's just the... Yeah, me too, man. I, I love the livery. It's, um, it's the colour scheme of my actual sim racing team that I managed for a while. Um, I had to give it up because it was um, interfering with my drinking, but uh, it's nice to revive it. It's a good looking car. Now, now I've ballsed up my lap a bit, um, and I don't think I'm going to recover the time. Why don't we take a I might get a cheeky photo and then I can share this to the Failcast Instagram account and try and get us some some more viewers. Hold on, let me bring it out into the sun so you can actually see it. It's handsome, no? Um, it's not the livery I would have picked, but the game locks most of the liveries and helmets and race suit designs and you have to unlock them through play. So I've already designed a better livery for season two, but I wanted to have a consistent livery for, for this year. But, ah, chef's kiss. Um, I went through like three or four different color schemes in sim racing before I settled on this one. And then I kept this one for years because um, it was a color scheme that no one else was doing. And I found that really surprising because um, really it's just a copy of the silk cut Jaguars from the nineties. But I guess, um, I mean, what I'm seeing now, because when you race in multiplayer, people race in their own My Team cars, is that everyone's copying McLaren. I see so many orange cars now. That's really cool. I See, I, I also like when people do tribute liveries and stuff like that. I've got an Arrows tribute livery that I'm going to do a one-off race in at some point. Um, but uh, Simon was supposed to do a Minardi revival, revival, but he's doing a Simtech revival apparently, and that means we both have purple cars. So I've already left a message in his chat on his stream telling him off because um, I feel I feel attacked by this. Okay, so we didn't actually qualify third in the end. If I'd been paying attention, we might have held on for fifth or something. But seventh is our best qualifying in four rounds now. Um, so. Now I'm just hoping I can bring it home in the points because um, bringing it home in the top 10 would unlock uh, a bonus payment from one of our sponsors and we really need that.
Oh shit, none of them. I can't race against them. My car is not good enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I should just like, like prison, just go after the biggest, meanest dude to like Hamilton. Fuck that guy. Massive clanging brass testicles and a complete disregard for what's going on on track because I was reading the chat. Yeah, I bet you could. I've heard that about him. He spends all his time changing his hairstyle and wearing ridiculous glasses. No discipline. That's the problem with that boy. I have to say though, uh, credit where it's due, I haven't so far this season seen Lewis in a pair of ridiculous glasses. So we're making progress. Um, we're making progress. He must have got the message from all the mockery um, that was doing the rounds on the internet. Because um, it's a very fine line to walk. And you'd think if anyone could pull it off, it'd be him because he's a naturally sort of cool guy and he's famous and everything. Um, I think you're right, Kane and I. Uh, we're doing it as an experiment. We actually started the season with Jordan King um, and he developed really well in terms of his stats, but his results were far off what the car was cle clearly capable of. And in the end, at mid-season, we swapped him for Mick Schumacher because he was, um, he was less than half the price of King for similar stats and it allowed us to invest in the factory. And we have the assumption that Mick Schumacher will prove to be overpowered because of his family name. So we wanted to see if we put him in the car, if he'll outperform his stats. Um, it's hard to say if that's necessarily happening, but um, in terms of uh, logical replacements, um, Nick De Vries was an obvious choice because he was cheaper than Jordan King at the end and um, had better stats. Also, uh, Antoine Hubert, Nobuhara Matashita and Jack Aitken were also cheaper and comparable. Um, and I was also considering it was between investing in the factory or saving up the money to get George Russell um, on the basis that George Russell ha also brings in more sponsorship potentially and... Um, might be able to do more with a better car. Well, yeah, but I mean, I, I don't want to. I don't want to admit that because maybe she doesn't feel the same. You know, and um, my plan was to like get Simon to talk to one of her friends to see if she liked me back, and then maybe I'd put her in the car because you know you don't want to put yourself out there if they don't feel the same way. That went off the rails pretty quickly, didn't it? <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Uh, it's been a long week. <laughs> I do hope, though, they find a way to, to sort of... In the back door... Um, where's he going with this? In the back door, bring in pay drivers. Oh, God damn it. But it's okay. I can watch it on replay, right? Because Twitch saves your last few streams. So I'll go and I'll leave comments and then he'll check the comments. He'll see the comments and uh, then we'll be best mates. It's time for the Italian Grand Prix once again. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking. Sorry if you cared about uh, the grid lineup, but um, be able to push for a points finish this race. Okay, so then win. alternative plan. I watch the VOD. Then I hire a private detective to find where he lives. Fly to Finland. Turn up at his house unannounced. Maybe with a crate of beer. Knock on the door. Introduce myself. Then we become best mates. And as long as we get that photo we were talking about, then you know his family keep all their fingers. Um, so, a good solution. It's race time! That's a good plan. And also it's a good icebreaker. Because, you know, he'll spend all that time wondering like, 
can, can we hug? Will he hug me back? But then I remove all doubt immediately because he knows that, yes, I will hug him back. In fact, I'll hug him first. That's how much I respect his career at Tyrrell. Shit balls. And then, yes, then somehow this leads to us convincing a Danish multinational to produce a play set of a Brazilian play, pay driver in a midfield car. It's so obvious when you think about it. I don't know why I haven't thought of this before. Yeah, I know that was illegal. Sorry, guys. Um, I was so busy making Mikasalo jokes. Um, <laughs> this time it'll be clean. Um, it is how self-isolation works if you want it to be how self-isolation works. I mean, how much of a fight can he put up? Okay, that's, that was a bit better. And that clunking you heard, actually, for once, wasn't anyone hitting me. And now we're through turn one. Um, we should be fine. I love how the cars in front of me seem to stop in a reasonable distance and my car just like a bullet streaks towards them even though I'm fully braking. Was that to a lack of what a lack of trying or did opportunity not present itself? Unfortunately now, uh, all, I've, all I've got is this uh, image in my mind of you like on a tram just casually coughing onto a woman's head and then saying, now you come home with me. Like dead, dead pan expression. Safety first. I hope they do bring them out as DLC, but I imagine it m it might be tricky. Um, I don't know if there's any... Presumably there's licensing implications, but um, also I, I don't know how they created the tracks here. Um, like, if it's just an artist's interpretation of the track or if there's any scanning of the track that has to be done, I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, they did say that, but I think that's back when um, the only possible addition was uh, looking like uh, Imola or Mugello, and now we've got both, plus potentially a bunch more. Um, it's, hard, it's really hard to say what they're going to do, because this is another title in the series that clearly has a DLC store built into it. Like, there is a store tab... And at the moment, it has two pieces of DLC. It just so happens I already have them because I got the Schumacher edition. Um, DRS will be enabled this lap. You can use it when within one second of the car ahead. Oh, we're fighting each other. Um, but I don't know why they wouldn't use the store that they've built and make a bit of extra coin. Because also, they can make money selling um, exclusive cosmetics for the My Team mode. Um, or driver packs, like someone else mentioned. Um, you know, like, you know, a W series driver pack, uh, an F3 series driver pack, just to, just to give you a bit of, um, a bit more variation. Uh, as we were talking about earlier, maybe a Fernando Alonso pack with an extra classic car or two. Um, <clears throat> obviously, <clears throat> a, uh, a Pedro Diniz pack that ties into the launch of his uh, range of Lego products that we've decided he's going to get. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's all gravy at this point. It's all gravy. See, I was really happy that they, they put the Benettons in this game. And... 
when people had asked them in the past um, about putting cars that aren't just Lotus, Ferrari and McLaren um, in there, they always said, well, with these teams, there's there's a lot of complicated issues around licensing because, you know, you've got to find the, the modern day rights holder and then there's sponsors on there and so on. Um, but for me, like, Sauber are still around. How hard would it be, really, to license old Sauber designs? Um, you know, the livery doesn't have to have the sponsors on it. Just You just need the car. Um, what's the... Uh, keep current. Keep current. Ignorant prick. And, you know, um, if they're adding in the new liveries, I'd like to see all the models um, for the drivers having uh, COVID masks on. Yeah, I mean, there is, there is one retro um, Red Bull already in. Um, like, how, you know, how hard would it be as well to stick in some retro Toro Rosso's just to give us some variety? Because the classic cars are fun, it's just... You don't have much cause to, to use them, um, unless like you specifically set out to say, I'm going to run a classic car race today, because reasons. Yeah, um, it'd be really easy to get the voice actors for that, right? Because you wouldn't even need the actual drivers. So, you know, you could be having a coffee in the team truck and, you know, Danny Ricardo comes over and... Um, and then subtitles pop up. Good day, sport. Tiny kangaroo down, um, or, or whatever it is he would say. It actually, it actually reminds me of. Um, I was I was travelling by uh, tram through the city the other week, and there was some kind of disruption on the line. And when there's a disruption in Berlin, it's it's really hard um, to figure out where you're supposed to go because it's always improvised, and. So the tram driver comes onto the intercom, uh, and the message is <laughs> feeling dank for ear of a <laughs> which is thank you for your understanding. But I couldn't understand a word that he fucking said except the thank you. Um, it was the most balloon thing to happen to me in a while, actually. Um, the six wheeler is probably really hard to get because. Um, the designs for the Tyrrells, I believe, are not all owned by the same people. Um, safety car, safety car. Oh, pit stop pace. time. Keep your delta number positive as we form up. Drop your speed. Our delta is too low. Oh, the stupid virtual so safety car delta. Can we not? Can we just not? How about that? Like, we all get together. Have, a, have a, a refreshing beverage and we all say no to the virtual safety car. Say no to drugs and say no to the virtual safety car. Um, because, again, m uh, Mr. Monopoly in Formula One, um, Paul Stoddart, um, when Tyrrell was sold to BAR, um, it does sound like a disease and it is a disease, it's a plague upon our sport. Box this lap. Pitting this lap, then come into the pits at the end of this lap. It's cheap and cheerful pit stop time. Um, but yeah, what I was saying was when BAR bought Tyrrell, um, the assets of the team, um, in terms of like physical assets, were all picked up by Paul Stoddart, and I don't know if that means he took designs as well. Um, I thought about this. Um, Arrows, I think, because it was completely liquidated, um, the factory the was like a separate the entity. Um, but the, the like Arrows Grand Prix International as a company is completely defunct, and I don't think it was trademarked. 
Oh, yes. And look at that. Nicholas Latifi up in fourth. Your eyes do not deceive you, my friends. This is, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Come and have a taste of my tasty Kool-Aid beverage and sleep forever. And, you know, some excellent strategizing there from uh, the boys on the Williams pit wall. Um, if I'm not wrong, uh, we must be second or third on track, really, um, at this point, because we've got Bottas ahead of us. Um, I don't know if Verstappen stopped. I don't know if the Ferrari stopped. It looks like they're on red wall tyres. Latifi hasn't stopped. Okay, so Leclerc stopped and Bottas stopped for sure. Um, but it it looks it looks to me I don't know if Verstappen stopped. But Latifi definitely hasn't, and who's that in second? Is that Can you guys tell who that is in second? It does look a bit Williamsy, doesn't it? Oh, it is. Oh, please tell me. Please tell me. It's possible. Uh, no, that's a safety car, mate. Um, Leclerc's P1. So we are... Uh, Leclerc, Russell, Verstappen, Latifi, Bottas and me. This is amazing. Right, I'm, I know it's going to be slow and boring, but we now, I insist, have to finish under the safety car. Because I get the points that I wanted. Um, and we get a Williams on the podium. And almost a double podium for Williams. All we need is Verstappen's engine to give out. All the Clares. And then we get a Williams win. Oh, this could be so glorious. It's so easy. Come on, game. Come on. Yeah, the safety car will be in... Uh, I guess next lap now, because normally they would have announced by now that it was coming in. <clears throat> I'm also wondering actually if um, Latifi pits now, because he's going very long on, on his tyres. Oh shit, actually, how are my tyre temperatures? Ice cold, that's why it feels a bit funny. Unless, beard stroke. <laughs> If only somehow I could I could break in such a way that Vettel spins out, triggering another safety car. Okay, let's get ready to go oh no, the safety car is on this lap, and I've got cold tires. Let's so do something about that. Come on, tires. They are warming up, but ever so slowly. I didn't leave myself enough room to be hard on the brakes, but I was thinking the same thing. Come on, go if you're going. Okay, the incident has been cleared. Let's get back up to racing speed. Don't you close me out, you finished fuck. I'm gonna have to brake earlier than him though. Oh but I've got the inside line. Oh, who's, who's got a problem? Someone behind us has a problem. I'm surprised Bottas and I didn't hit each other, actually, because even though I legit had the inside line, the car didn't really want to make the turn. Oh, Monza, I love you. Sorry. Finger slip. I was trying to press the overtake button to turn it off because I don't want to completely razz my battery uh, right now because I need it to defend against Bottas. Um, <laughs> I 
<laughs> what did I do then? I was reading your comment and laughing. Sorry, I have to go back, because if it really was my fault, then... Um... Was that my fault? I mean, I just took the racing line. Come on, chat, you can be the steward. Was that my fault? Beetlejuice, you're the hard judge here. Okay, well, if, if you're saying it's not my fault, then it must be true. That is quite an impact he had there. I thought we were mates, Canaanite. Why do I get a warning for that? Okay, some information on Bottas. They are out of the race. Just a bit. He's just a bit out of the race. Yeah, it's hilarious how that's not an SC, but someone pulling over off the track. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, um, um, am I, am I, am I catching Max Verstappen while also running in third place? Because it very much seems like that might be something that's happening in the real world right now as, as we live and breathe and communicate. He's getting two tenths on me there though, so but I didn't use any overtake until now. I've got plenty of fuel. That's plus two laps, mate. I've got fuel to burn, I'm running the car heavy, I've got five laps of fuel on board of the safety car. We have five laps of fuel remaining. Oh, see, there we go. Jeff just feels the need to make a point. But thank you for being vigilant, because um, as Beetlejuice and Wodge will attest, I have run out of uh, fuel before now in qualifying. I was about to set um, a really strong qualifying lap, and coming out of the last turn, um, I ran out of fuel, because um, without wanting to put too fine a point on it, I'm a fucking idiot and um, didn't realise I'd underfueled my own car. <laughs> oh, it's, sometimes it's just fun. It's just fun being me. Yeah, there, there we dream. But yeah, I am closing the gap there, aren't I? I'm going to be within a second in the next DRS zone. The detection points coming up. I love this section of the track. Oh no, he pulled out a bit of. Um, he pulled out three tenths on me through that corner. So he's going to he's going to live to fight another day. I don't think I'm going to get the DRS this time. Vettel's picking up speed behind me. He must have been saving his overtake to have a, a last gasp of crack. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't feel I'm qualified to cast aspersions on his tendency to make stupid uh, manoeuvres, um, because we're something of kindred spirits, uh, Grosjean, he and I. We could start a club, exclude all the other drivers. We can call it the Crashy Club, or the, 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 the Crash Tastics. Um, Butterfingers United.
exactly. I actually heard of someone once who had uh, the nickname Edward Dildo Hands because he fucked everything that he touched. And I was starting to think that that should, it may end up becoming my nickname at this rate. <laughs> it's a good name, isn't it? <laughs> oh, we're holding on. This is your final round, final lap of the race. And we got into DRS range of the Dutchman. We have two laps of fuel remaining. Oh, could it be? C could it be? Could, could we? Well, not if I keep driving on the grass, it couldn't, but... But it could, it could maybe possibly be. I have to reverse that. Sorry, I braked where I was supposed to, but the car just didn't want to stop, so... Um, I wasn't going to attempt that illegal overtake. That would be very naughty of me. See, this is where I crack under the pressure. Edward Dildo hands. Alright, deal. <laughs> I like that even more. Do you know, I might start turning it off um, because I know I'm abusing it at this point. Oh no. I don't know if I can keep him behind. I left the door open. Um, I don't know. I heard like a, it sounded like a mouse sneezing. Like normally when you hit each other, there's like a clonk. But I heard like a noise and then suddenly he was gone. Um, I'm guessing he spam. Um, they make mistakes now and maybe, maybe he, the tip of his um, nose went into my rear tire, but I didn't feel anything and normally that would spin me out rather than him. So I, I have no idea. It, it was a sound I've not heard before. It, it like like a little hiss of compressed air or something. <clears throat> but I I wasn't closing the door on him. I didn't turn in on him. Um, screenshotting that on the podium. But yeah, that, that's my theory. We can check it if you want, but either he span of his own volition or he, he nudged himself round running into the back of me. Um, but I was following the racing line uh, distinctly. So, um, oh wow, we've unlocked the zebra print uh, outfit that um, I was Let's hoping Simon would use. Uh, right, we've got a lot of fast forwarding to do now. Is there a way to skip right to the end? No, of course not. This is what you get for being diligent. Yeah, judge, jury and executioner. I know how it works in your kangaroo court. Well, here you go. You can watch me being uh, useless in, uh, in high speed. We just need the Benny Hill music. Jesus Christ. These are long. Where, where's the bar gone as well so I can... Oh, there. Well, uh, settle in for a, a long one, guys, because you're basically going to have to sit to the whole race again to get there. Why doesn't it have a, a skip to the end? That's mad. Oh, 
I like how in every shot my brakes are on fire. Just all of them. <laughs> But I do think that will be my last race for the night because the last two have been shameful and I've been a lot cleaner in the early part of the season than I have been uh, recently. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I, I had pace. It's just those those cars are definitely, uh, are definitely faster under most conditions. Well, it might be a shameful P3 given that um, it may be that I deserve a penalty, but... Um, Like, um, we can find out, <clears throat> but um, when normally when I have accidents where I know the triangle button gets rid of the overlay so you can take a screenshot, and the X button that just pauses and plays. Um, so sadly, there's not like an immediate skip to end button. Um, but normally when I have accidents, it's in heavy braking zones. Um, or it's where I've been far too aggressive with an overtake and I clip someone or they clip me. Um, and I've been a lot better for it so far this year, but the last two races have been really bad and I need to be uh, more aware of it. But we may now see, did I clip someone that I shouldn't have done? Um, but if I did, it definitely wasn't intentional. I was conscious of where he was and I, I even left room. I didn't weave in the braking zone or anything. Um, and I'm hoping it proves to be an issue like Bottas because Bottas took himself out, um, which was quite interesting to see. I mean, I know the AI at times can be a little too aggressive, but um, but I'm happy with the podium. Like that's, that's really good. And it puts us back on track a bit because we haven't, we haven't scored points uh, much so I mean we had a really strong start to the season then we had that real 3-4 round dry spell where we didn't score anything so it's good um, right we're after the safety car now this is where I almost killed Nicholas Latifi but didn't and that was a clean overtake so I'm happy with that Yeah, of course, mate. And I'm doing more than one season. I'm loving this. I'm, I'm really enjoying my team mode. I didn't think that I would, um, because I thought I want a management game, not a driver management game. But um, it's compelling and deep enough that it's actually really sucked me in. And um, I, I'm going through this. A... Oh, was that the Bottas incident? Or did someone else crash? What did I miss? Is this where... Oh no, Bottas is already gone at this point because uh, Vettel's behind me. But we're getting close to the end of the Grand Prix now so we can finally settle the did I kill Sebastian Vettel uh, incident. Um, but again, this time I don't I don't feel too bad if I did because it genuinely wasn't intentional. So, at least in terms of intent, it was a racing incident. But um, and I felt I was just following the racing line. But but maybe I'll have to go down for murder. There's some really nice effects actually, but the problem is it's kind of undone by the fact that the the textures go low res so much and. Um, there's a bit of popping occasionally, but also I like the tyre debris uh, coming off as well. And I don't mean to brag, um, but I think we've done a really good job on our livery. It's the third version, and with the help of chat, we eventually got there, and I'm now really proud of it. I think it looks fucking brilliant. Come on, it was going faster than this before. Why is it... There we go. Sorry, guys. But one more lap, then we're on the last lap, and then we can finally settle the mystery. I'm glad it wasn't me that did Bottas, um, because him taking himself out 
that that's what got us the podium really because I, pro I may have been able to keep Vettel behind it looks like I could have done but there was no way I could keep Bottas behind because he was much faster and um, the, the rate he was closing there was no legal way to keep him behind is this it? no it must be the next lap and there was a moment where I thought like here here I thought on exit I might have been able to get Verstappen, but it just, it wasn't to be. Um, the car also, it just didn't, it always seems that towards the end of a stint, the car just doesn't want to hold the line anymore. So the more chassis and aero upgrades we get, the easier that should become. Uh, okay, so yeah, this is where Vettel's finally caught us and we're now fighting for P3 legitimately. We come down here and then, I'm nervous now. So he moves out for the overtake, but I stay on the racing line and I say, I said at the time, I'm going to leave him room, right? So I did, I didn't shut the door entirely. There's a car's width on the inside, which he's trying to go into. So you've got plenty of room. Oh, and the camera, oh, the camera jumps to here. Oh, I guess we'll never know. <laughs> no. Um, Yeah, it looks like it's my fault, actually. Then again, I am ahead of him. So, I mean, in the Lewis, in the Lewis Hamilton, Alexander Albon issue, um, Lewis got the penalty because Albon was ahead of him. Um, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you're on my side on this one, Beetlejuice. Whenever you say it wasn't my fault, then I'm inclined to believe it's not. But also, it didn't make the normal noise that it makes when there's um, an incident because normally it makes like a clunking sound. I tell you what, the cars hold a lot better when uh, impacted now and even when they're going to spin, you can catch it, which you never could before. Um, I don't know if you can notice as well, but oh, it's not rendering it now, but there was an impact mark on my side pod from where it hit me, but it seems it doesn't want to show it now. Um, let's... So... P3, P4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. P 17 for Mick Schumacher. Let's see if he holds on to it till the end. And he's number 67. And it, I, guys, you've really helped me out with this livery. It looks fucking beautiful. And actually, he's not far behind um, who's ahead. That is Perez. And behind him is Magnussen. So he's beaten Magnussen. I mean, it's close. They're, they are racing each other, but I mean, there's a respectable gap there. Yeah, the lack of a prominent Chinese sponsor probably helps. Um, so there we go. Um, a podium. A podium. Um, that is a good way to end the stream. Guys, thank you so much for spending your evening with me. I'm pathetically grateful. Um, I've had a lot of fun hanging out with you. We've had some good giggles uh, with the Pedro Diniz Lego playset. Um, I will be back tomorrow morning for a few hours. Um, if any of you are so inclined to make it, um, I'd love to see you again. And if not, if you're busy, then I wish you a wonderful weekend. Uh, Simon and I may also be live at some point on Sunday. Uh, you can catch him over on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash higher playing games. He's live right now. Um, also, you can follow us on Instagram at, at failcastf1 or one word. And there we put the going live notifications and so on if you're not a follower. And to all the people who seem to be watching on YouTube or on Twitch, Thank you also for spending your time hanging out with me. I know we're not getting the live back and forth, but I'm super grateful. Um, I wish you all the very, very best of weekends and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow or if not Sunday or next week. Ciao for now.